going on, Breaking Brown family? We are in here today. I wanted to um, have this special show to have a to have a kind of um, special conversation. Um, you know, I normally don't. Those of you who know me know I normally don't add a show during the week. I haven't done as many quick hits or whatever, but I wanted to have a conversation about something that I think is exponentially important. Um, and I don't know, before I bring my special guest on, I want to give uh, a, a little bit of background for those of you who might not remember. So some of you might not remember um, the, 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 the disappearance, the disappearance of... Um, of my Therese Richardson, right? And it, I will let my guest describe what happened, but I think we have to talk about this in the context of black politics, in the context of what we expect um, from from our from our political leaders, in the context of what happened in this situation, and who was held accountable. Um, and and this young lady went missing. Uh, she was later found dead. And at that time, you know, Kamala Harris was there. This is California. And we're going to have a conversation about exactly what happened in that case, what was forgotten in that case. And for me, and this is just for me, what, we, what we're looking at is an instance where you really could benefit from having a black politician um, in that space who is advocating for us but i don't want to take up too much time to have this uh to have this conversation or to try to describe what happened because i can't do it justice right i there's no way for me to there's no way for me to do to have this uh to have this conversation or to try to describe do it justice right i there's no way for me to there's no way for me to do to do that justice so what i'm going to do I'm going to bring on right now, I'm going to bring on Michael Richardson, and I want him to, to just kind of have that conversation. Um, can you hear me, Mr. Richardson? I'm here. I'm okay. here. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I just want to, before we get started, I just want to take the time to thank you um, for, for, for coming on. And I know this has to be, you know, to have to have this conversation again and relitigate this conversation is not something that, you know, any parent would want to do, but I, I want to thank you for just being here and, and taking us through the timeline of what happened. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem. It's my pleasure. Thank Anytime you, I can talk about my daughter, it's always a benefit. I understand, and I, and, I, and I appreciate it. And, you know, you and I spoke offline, and so I, I, what I want you to do, because I want you to take take us through because i know what happened i've read i spent the last few days reading about what happened because i remember but that was a long time ago we're talking 2009 to 2010 am i right correct so take me through take me through a little bit of of of, of and i'm gonna try to, to turn you up just a little bit so people can hear you better um but take me through like what happened from the time we have her at a restaurant. Um, we have her, and then what happens after that period? Because you know, you know, I don't want to tell your story. You know your story better than me. Correct. So basically, in uh, September 16, 2009, Mytrice goes to this restaurant called Joffrey's in Malibu, uh, California. It's a very high end, expensive restaurant. Um, she was pretty much celebrating the fact that she graduated with honors from Cal State Fullerton in a very, very strenuous curriculum of uh, behavioral health science. Um, she started having a good time, and I guess the Major D felt that she needed to be counseled based on her actions, so they called Lost Hills sheriff station because the way the call went was they thought she was acting a little bit strange and they didn't know if she was drunk or if she was on some type of substance so they call for uh los hill police station they come out they do a sobriety test she passed um 
And so basically they said, well, they felt like she was going to skip out on paying her $89 tab. Mm -hmm. They called her grandmother. Her grandmother said, I could pay for the, the, the meal over the phone. Joffrey's restaurant declined to take the payment over the phone. Mm. Her grandmother, 88 years old, and she's like, well, I don't drive that night, so I don't know what you're gonna do, but I can pay the tab. Um, and my treats had credit cards in her car from her income tax at that time. So <laughs> um, they called the police and they decide instead of fighting her and writing her a ticket, they're going to do a hard book. So they cuffed her, uh, put her purse, her cell phone, her money in the trunk of her car and had her car impounded. They take her to Long Hill Sheriff's Station and her mother was calling to find out what was going on and they kept telling her, well, we're going to keep her here to six o'clock in the morning. Her mother says, well, make sure because I don't want to read the headlines the next day because you released her and her head chopped off, you know. Yeah. And they're like, no, no, she's in the cell. She's doing fine. So around 2 o'clock, her mother calls again. She was crying. She was upset. She's like, I haven't heard from my daughter. She hasn't called. And the, uh, the jailer at the time says, oh, she's fine. I'm looking at her right now. You know, she's doing great. Uh, so when she wake up, we'll have her call. That's at 2 o'clock in the morning. But they had already released my treats at 1234 at night. Mm. In the middle of Malibu Canyons. No running transportation. She has no purse, no car, no cell phone to call anybody. Mm. Um, she goes missing. Um, some lady from Malibu says that they saw her that following morning and uh, she called the police station saying there's an African-American woman acting strangely in the in, in the area, come check it out. The next thing they know that is there's this guy named Bill, he was a retired newscaster and his cameras picked her up on his property. Last of anything. Um, the next time uh, we we do a news conference and press conference, because uh, now she's declared missing. Um, we're looking at the surveillance of her at this guy's residence. They call for all of this uh, trail and, and, and search parties the next day. Um, the dogs picked up that my trees went walking down that street and all of a sudden she started running. Mm. The dog picked up the trail. Um, they picked her scent up and they picked her trail up on the porch of Bill's residence. All of a sudden, the trail goes, is gone. Uh, I'm like, well, did somebody pick her up? Did they put her in a car? I mean, what, what happened? If Bill's house was the last house, what's going on? They called off the search that was supposed to continue the following day because they said the dogs were tired and they needed the rest. But that, so all of that went cold. So it took us eight months to find out the sadness of she's no longer with us. Um, they found her remains a mile away, a mile, or, mile and a half away from the Law Hill Sheriff Station in a ravine, Malibu Canyon uh, area. The coroner gave strict instructions, do not tamper with anything till we get there. Well, despite their direct order, they scooped up my tree's remains, threw them in a bag, and airlifted them out of there. They, uh, so they contaminated the whole investigation scene right there. Um, a week later, my, my tree's mom received permission from Lee Baca to go back to that scene and, you know, do her memorial service and bring closure. So her and some family go down there and her mother sitting in the area where her daughter was and rubbing her hand in the dirt, come across some parts of my daughter that was left in that area. So they had to grab that information but what they did was they made it seem like 
that was the most difficult area to get to. Um, so they air, they used the helicopter to bring them down into the area that my trees was at. Now, so now, they now, who, trying to make it seem who, like who, who is Lee Baca? For, for those of us who are not in L.A., like, I, I want, oh, because, because what happens is, no, don't, don't apologize Baca, at all. Lee Baca was the previous sheriff of Los Angeles County before he had to step down on corruption charges, and he's now on an appeal facing federal time and indictment. Uh, that's who was spearheading all of this information and in my daughter's case. So he wanted to make it seem like they couldn't get down there and my trees must have committed suicide, she must have jumped. Well, residents in that area is like, that's bull crap because that's the trail where she was found at. And if you live there, you know that that's a trail. Everybody goes hiking there. You can walk that trail. You didn't need to come down in a helicopter and be brought down on spring and all of that to get to that area. So finally, uh, after all of this is going on, uh, we asked for the surveillance tapes of my trees leaving the precinct of Lost Hill Sheriff Station. So Captain Tom Martin of the precinct at the time says, unfortunately, the cameras were not working that night and they don't have any surveillance. Four months later, with investigators and deep research, we found out that was a lie. Captain Tom Martin pulled the tape out of the projector and kept it in his desk because he thought it was appropriate to provide it. When they finally provided the tape, it had been severely altered and tampered and cut that it was not even useful to us in the court. Well, I heard, uh, I heard, I heard, I heard that, I heard that what made people think that the tape was tampered with too was like she was holding a piece of paper at one moment. And then the next moment, the piece of paper was on the ground, bumbled up. And so there was no video of what happened in between. Like there were there were moments that correct. looked like they were missing from the from the from the actual video. Is that correct? Correct. That is very much correct. There was, it was just skipping and jumping and and I'm like I don't need to pay money to see just how bad it was. I mean it was bad enough for us to notice that it was something wrong. Uh, they never investigated the deputy that followed my treat out. Uh, Come to find out, uh, the spokesperson, Steve Whitmore, lied and said that my treats was released and she came right out the front door of the precinct. Well, the video showed us that my treats came out through the side where they actually bring prisoners in and book them. So they let her out on the side of the building and there was a questionable deputy that was walking out right behind her when she was released. And didn't they say that the that deputy couldn't have done it? I heard that they said that the deputy couldn't have done it because he was on duty. What does that mean? Like he couldn't have been involved because he was on duty. Like what kind of specificity is that? And we I understand everybody, we're talking 2009. We're not talking the day after the advent of like all of these body cameras. We're talking, we're talking 2009. Correct. And um, he, it was very much possible for him or anybody else that was on duty because they don't keep a, run, a log of their their touring and their ride-alongs and anything like that. And if he walked out behind her, why couldn't he? Once he get on that main street called Lost Hill, uh, Lost Virginis, or uh, however you pronounce it, I can't pronounce it, um, anything could have happened down the street. You know, so uh, that that didn't run well with me anyway. Um, so after we started seeing the run around the lies that was going on, uh, Lee Baca said, well, I'm going to call in a favor to the attorney general. He's a good friend of mine, and we're going to see if he will investigate this at his level. I thought, hey, you know, okay, cool. So he came back. Unfortunately, there was not enough information to... Uh, investigate my tree, so they declined. Mm -hmm. A really good friend of the family who uh, uh, gave my tree an internship was Dr. Rhonda Hampton, and she's a uh, clinical psychologist, 
and she was teaching my daughter the ropes under her internship. Okay. She took it and she because my Trace my Trace has a my Trace had a um a psychology degree. Am I am I correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. She she had got that uh, at Cal State Fullerton. Okay. So she was doing her interns working under Dr. Rhonda. Rhonda took it upon herself to produce over 500 documents, pieces of paper, outlining, circling, taking pictures, pointing out all kinds of things, and sent it to the Attorney General, who at the time was Kamala Harris in charge. Okay. And sent it to them, and uh, she received a letter back saying, that they do not return anything that is submitted. Unfortunately, they are not going to investigate this matter because there was nothing found. Mind you, they responded back to her after she submitted over 500 documents. They responded back to her in less than 72 hours. You could not have possibly went through all of that material mm -hmm. and come up with a conclusion that fast. Mm -hmm. The second thing that was questionable was that they, even though they said that they were not going to investigate and they keep everything, they actually returned all the paperwork back to Dr. Ron after they said they don't do that. Now let's let, so let me just let me just we, let me just let me just I don't mean to interrupt because I know there's a delay in the call so people there's a delay in terms of you hearing me in the call. Let me just frame this so people understand before we we're gonna we're gonna get into Kamala but let me frame so everybody understands that Lee Baca was found guilty of corruption for covering up something else and locking an FBI agent to a table when he came to when he came to investigate what was going on so understand that this is the police department that you're dealing with and then we talk about uh, now and now we go from this corrupt there's no question about the police department being corrupt and now we go to to Kamala Harris so I'm gonna let you go I just wanted to make sure we frame and had everybody understand Lee Baca and then go to what Kamala Harris and continue what you were saying okay so after Lee Baca has to step down, there's another sheriff that comes in. His name is Jim McDonald. Promises that, hey, you know, if we push him and, and, and be on his side, when he gets in office, he's going to do this for my treats and he's going to do that for my treats. He gets elected, gets in office, and now all of a sudden he has no comment as it relates to my treats Richardson. So on December 24th of a uh, few years ago, I forget exactly, but I think it was 14, 15, something like that. I'm sitting in my garage and I have a moment, you know. And so I says to myself, I'm going to write this Kamala Harris directly. I'm not going to send a whole bunch of documents. I'm just going to put out book, chapter, and verse. What happened to my Trees Richardson? Mm -hmm. Because now I'm doing interviews like I'm doing with you. Mm -hmm. I'm doing, I'm on KJLH, I'm on ABC, I'm doing all these news presses. And I'm just saying that, you know, Kamala Harris is really, or Maxine Waters, these black people are really not doing anything conducive as it relates to my treats Richardson. You know, they out here shaking hands, building parks, and giving out turkey. But real things that matter to the black community, they sway away from, they run from. So um, I write this letter to Kamala Harris and I tell her, hey, you know what? When I look at you, I think of my daughter. My daughter looks like you, kind of resemble you. Mm. Very well educated, very well read, and she was very ambitious like you. And I just cannot see how you guys cannot investigate this matter. I don't see in none of the paperwork. I don't see in anything that Dr. Rhonda printed out. And I have a copy of all of this. I have everything. Mind you, they write me back and say, I'm going to investigate this matter. I go back. The news media hears about it. I have to go back and start doing these uh, interviews again. And her numbers are starting to improve. 
people starting to say, hey, you know, it took her a minute, but hey, she's doing her thing now. This is all we wanted. And so I, int- I got introduced to her California Attorney General out here last winter, who ironically has the same name as the coroner that investigated my Teresa's case at the coroner's office mm. out here. He says, uh, so we make our introductories and everything like that. And I said, well, you know what? I'm going to give you some room. I'm not pushy. I just hope you come up with the same thing that we come up with. Four months go by. I don't hear from him. I call him. He calls me back. And he says, well, you know, we're actively on it. uh, But I can't disclose anything at this time because we don't want to jeopardize the investigation. I said, okay, no problem. Anything you guys need, my family is here to answer anything. Never got another call. December came. Uh, we found out Kamala Harris is now going to be our senator. That following, the, <laughs> the following almost the next day, the letter is dated that after she's won and she's declared the winner, I get the letter saying there was nothing conclusive in their investigation and they dropped it. And I forward you those letters so you have the proof that I'm not lying. And it was over and done with. Then I find out recently that Kamala Harris is still using my daughter on WikiLeaks profile saying that she had to take the reign and had to investigate the Mitrice Richardson case and everything like that. How do you investigate this case when you sent everything back? What did you use? What did you have? You had nothing. You had no intentions of doing it. So, you, so what you had was. So it's your is your thinking that that this started to catch fire basically, and and she had to do something because like it it, it was going to become a problem for her, a political problem though. Not like it was something that she felt that that she really wanted to do for the sake of helping helping you or resolve this or hold the officers accountable, you know uh, uh, who because, because let me just go back to one thing. Let me just go back to one thing. When you people people keep talking, uh, you know you you always hear and I go back to what people said during that time and what you hear people say is well you know the officers didn't do anything wrong. Here's the problem. The, there's a lot of there's so many parts in this whole story that don't make any sense, right? In terms of make no sense whatsoever. But you're telling me that you arrested her because she was sounding erratic, and she does sound like it sounds like a bipolar break to me when I read it. That's what it sounded like. It sounded like you're having a bipolar Correct. incident. So when you're having a bipolar Correct. incident, you took her in because she was having a bipolar incident. That's a good enough reason to take her to a hospital and have her assessed. So you were fine with taking her to the jail. But then you were fine with releasing her. None of that. May, it's, that's so inconsistent to bring her in because, well, I was bringing her in to safety. But then to release her out, and I want you, just as we go back through this, I want you to, I want you to, I don't think people really understand because we live in different places. The the area that she was released into with no money and no car and no bus pass and no anything. What does what 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 kind of area did they release your daughter into at midnight after midnight? This is a it is considered the canyons. Um, as a matter of fact, quote unquote, when we asked the officers, why did you scoop up her remains and you're not trained to, and after receiving a direct order. Quote unquote, it's getting late, and you guys know we're in the mountains, in the canyons, and there's wildlife out here. Oh, but wait a minute. It's okay to release a 24 year old girl out here at midnight, and you guys have guns and weapons, but you don't want to be out here at night when the sun goes down. Mm. So, this is one of the most rural, richest areas in California. It, it, it's very high out here, it's very pricey. These are where people like Tom Cruise, Mel Gibson, Charlie Sheen. This is this is their houses. Hmm. And this is the area. And this is the area. Now, from what I understand, it's very rich. But those people keep to themselves. 
right? It's not a place of. Absolutely, you have. Go ahead. I'm sorry. In, in my in my in my investigation, you have two types of people out there. You have the ones that keep to themselves, and you have the ones that grieve the palm of those officers out there. Now, let's take it back a step further. They released my daughter in the wild. Charlie Sheen and Mel Gibson, when they get arrested out there and they sober up, they get a ride home from the same mm. officer, from the same precinct my daughter was in. They drive them to their mansions. Mm. They drive them to their, they drive them back to their homes and to their mansions because there's wildlife out there. And where she was found was the canyons. I don't think people understand. I read something from a from a man who hikes for a living, who said that like nobody, no, you can't navigate that. Um, you, you, it's hard to navigate that terrain. It's very difficult to navigate that terrain if you are not a professional Absolutely. in terms of doing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is very much correct. So, you know, the, the, the ultimate part of it, you know, I just think Kamala Harris has an alternate. She gets what she wants by using and stepping on people by any means necessary. And when those numbers start declining, okay, my daughter was a life jacket for her. Those and, race numbers. You know, people don't understand. Right. And, and, and people don't understand. You know, they want to look at it like, oh, a woman is running. Oh, we don't want to vote for her because she's married to a white man. I wouldn't give a damn if she was married to the state. Do right by me because that ain't that ain't the side I'm on. Respect me for mine. You know, like I tell people all the time, the best part of being free is the fact that you have choices. You have the right to pick and choose. And, and you can't get in that, and I respect that. But I also feel like I am obligated to share with you some things that may help you alter your decision based on facts. And I believe in giving you book, chapter, and verse. I'm not just saying I don't like the lady. No. I'm just saying that I don't trust her to run up and speak for us. Now, hold on one second. In the letter that you received, I'm looking at this name. This name says Lance Winters. When you talk about work for us and speak for us and build us up, I want everybody to understand who that is. So I'm putting up a picture now. That you, this is this is Lance, okay? For when you think about who's going to work for us and speak for us, support us, the people on the, the people on the video can see it. And there's a – so, you know – I, I know you I know you brought this up as well, but what I want people to understand, you know, and I'm not going to play it while you're on the line. I know all this stuff is difficult, but his, but you have a situation where the mother said, I, I want to pick up my child. I don't want my child to be outside. They release your child into the midnight where there are wild animals and all sorts of things going on, right? Then, then you have the then you have the second situation where okay, you have you have done you have released the child. Now they said something that was also not true. They said that well we can we can release the well well they said well we changed the rule that said that now we can keep people in the jail or something like that in the lobby. Well, initially they said we asked her to stay in the lobby and she said no. That's what they said. But they tried to cover up. Something by saying something they already said. You said you allowed her to do that anyway. So, like, none of the stuff that they really say in terms of why she was allowed out and why she was not put in a space. You know, the mother said, I want to pick up my child. Her mother said, my treason's, my treason's mother said, I want to pick up my child. Uh, please make sure, uh, are you going to release it tonight? No, you release it to the night. And then you call. And then the second part about it I want to tell everybody is she calls back when, the, when my treason's mother calls back to the police office and says, you know, when can I file a report? The, the 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 guy abdicates our responsibility and says, well, you know, maybe two hours. If I were you, I might. And the letter of the law says that the person is not like a vagrant who's known to be disappearing. You can do that right now. He should have told her we're going to do that right now because she was brought in with symptoms of, 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 of being bipolar or uh, having some type of mental distress or mental emergency. You're supposed to do that right now. How do you not investigate that as as Kamala Harris? Correct, and and two and two other things is 
I retired from working in hospital administration for 23 years. There's two things that they could have done at that that precinct. First of all, based on the way she was acting, she shouldn't have never even went to the precinct. Mm. They should have took her to the nearest county facility for at least a 72-hour hold. Okay. Now, if they chose not to do that, which they didn't, um, the watch commander could have put a hold on her based on safety. Based on pure safety. But they wouldn't have had to do any of that if they would have just told her mother, like, come get her, because we're not going to hold her to 6 a.m. We're going to release her at midnight, come get her. She's getting out of here at midnight, come get her, yeah. Right, and the cold thing about it is when I called back the next morning and asked the jailer who was sitting back there with her, well, why would y'all do that? This sister gets so pissed off at me because I'm asking her question. She tells me because we have to release her because we're crowded. And I'm like, well, from my understanding, there was only another person in there with her, so you wasn't crowded. She's like, well, just take it like this then. We're not a goddamn babysitting organization. She had to go. And I'm like, okay, all right, all right, I can dig it. And you got to keep cool because you're at their mercy, you feel like. So you don't want to explode and be going off on the very people that you need to talk to. Yeah. And you want answers. So you got to tone it down. You got to kind of drink that soup cold, you know, and hope that you can get some answers that don't ultimately come out the way mine did, you know. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. And one of the things that, you know, one of the things that I wanted to bring up to you as well in terms of the 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 the, 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 the everything that happened there was a lot you know one of the things that the I, I, I was reading of I was reading I read about all sorts of things when I have something like this to talk about so I was reading of, of you know I had a bunch of forensic people who were I was reading what they were saying and they were saying that listen a body when you find and, and you know i it, it hurts me to even say that with you on the phone but i know we have to have this conversation it's attached to the environment right in a certain kind of specific way that people who are not into forensics don't really understand so we don't really understand the relationship that a body has to the environment around it and they were saying that's why without a coroner and without people who are not trained to take the right pictures and are not trained about how to remove bodies and bones, you don't do that. You don't move it. So it is inexplicable to me as to why they would they would move after she's found, may she rest in peace, after her body's found, why would you move that? And then I heard, I read somewhere else that the coroner's team was on alert, but they never got, they were on alert for like four hours. But they never got called in. Correct. What is that about? Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and so when you have all of this information, even the forensic experts that we hired were saying that it's very important to piggyback on what you said. It's very important that they not tamper with it because they are able to tell if that was the actual crime scene if the body was somewhere else and they brought it there. And now mind you, now let's let's take this a step further. So everybody's gonna say, well man, your daughter case was the second largest search party in the history of California. They spent millions on your daughter. How could you not be satisfied? Because it was all a dog and pony show. Mm. They say, they said that they covered 27 square miles, and they did. I mean, they bought the helicopters, they bought horses, and ATV vehicles to climb up the mountains, and scuba divers. They, they, it was all beautiful. But then, when we found my trees, she was a half a mile to three quarters of a mile out side of the starting point of the 27 square miles that they were going to have when they covered. If that don't be all, I don't know what to say. Somebody in there had information on where to put my daughter's body because they knew where they was going to start the search. 
What what and and but that's an, and that's another thing. Who you know they always say that the person who's missing um, is usually a woman who not a person a woman who's gone missing is usually if she's found dead she's gonna be found within ten within a ten mile radius of where she where she was last seen. Part of what is really worrisome to me, and I'm not gonna get into and you can if you want to, but I'm not gonna get into the specifics of it. There were there were parts her, her the, the the body and the clothes and everything didn't necessarily match the environment and the animals that were around and we don't know the bugs that were around because it wasn't everything wasn't collected right so and and then you have a situation not only did all this stuff happen and happen wrong but nobody was held accountable from what I see do you know anything that I mean nobody was held accountable correct and for the lady who wants to run and be our president that found no wrongdoing in this at all, as she normally does when it comes to her white counterparts mm. and white people that she worked with, they're, they're, are no, they're always in the right. They're always found not guilty. And I just cannot see how we could support that person, you know, that that is afraid to go against people who do us the way that they do it. Everybody got so excited when she did, she was caught on TV uh, uh, interrogating this guy under Trump. And I'm like, they all- Do you have Sessions? You're talking about Sessions? They all yeah. went, went, exactly. When they know the camera's on them, they, they cut up. Just like everybody got excited about Congress Maxine Waters for California when she told this man about racism and different things like this here. Man, at the end of the day, they call each other and apologize and say, hey, my constituents need to see that I interact like that. You know, nobody that's black American that's in politics and in leadership are doing anything in mm. California mm. to really fall, fight our causes against the police brutality and the blatant racism that we are encountering in our job performances with all of these companies hiring everybody else except for black Americans. And mm. nobody wants to take a stand on that. That's touchy. Well, and here's what I here's what I ask when when you look back at the t at what I put up a second ago, when you look back that 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 Lee Baca he is in jail or was in jail maybe he's in a, uh, I don't know what he's doing but when you look at the corruption right and you look at the fact that he has he has had to deal with the level of corruption, what I don't understand is how you don't double back and deal with Kamala in terms of that same corruption because she's a part of that same system. It, it wasn't just him. It was, it, this is a network. It's not just one person. Am I, am I wrong? No, you're absolutely right. And when you, when you, when these people are able to sit at the round table and they're talking about what a great rapport that they have and they work together, it, it's like, it, it's horrible. It, it just, it's just horrible. And, you know, I just cannot support this lady on anything that she does because she's part of that intricate, that lie and do anything by any means necessary to get where they get. Mm. Mm. And, 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 you know, what I will, what I will, because they don't have, see, what people don't understand is that what they're doing, they're going to drive the, the celebrities home, but they don't have like, you know, they don't want to deal with, with my trees. They don't have the number of jails or whatever. And they're just like, well, we, we can't keep them regardless of what we promise you. We have to write too many reports. We have to do whatever. And this stuff happens. And nobody gets held accountable or responsible. There's no accountability mechanism. And then Kamala Harris is running for office. And she writes you a letter saying, yeah, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. And then after, you know, everything goes her way or whatever, she don't want to do that no more. And nobody, everybody look at Lee Baca, which is right. I'm, I'm, I'm totally with looking at Lee Baca. But my question is, when are we going to, um, when are we going to hold Kamala Harris and asked some difficult questions about what did not happen. 
um, and her not necessarily wanting to go against the police. Like you don't, you look. It looks to me like you just want to give the police a, a get out of jail free card. Correct. And and the best thing that your listeners and your bloggers can do is when they when that woman have town home meetings and she's coming to your state, the first thing need to happen is why didn't you ask Lee Baca the same questions or interrogate him? in the Mike Treese Richardson case like you did Jeff Sessions. Mm. That needs to go viral as they say now. Whenever that woman gets up to speak and talk about mm. things, you know what? That needs to be the number one question. Mm. And I, I bet you the way she tried to tap dance and swim out of that, it, you know, it, it's just not going to make any kind of sense. Mm. It's just not. And, you know, and I'm not just saying that a lot of families say, hey, you know what, when they don't get what they want, a lot of people say, well, you know, they're, of course they're going to, it's just like the Super Bowl. It was a car test. And people, some people going to be angry about it, some people going to be excited about it. But with with this kind of matter, with all the bloopers in this, in this game here, that's just not one cause. We counted them up, and we came up with 20 calls that were not called that should have been called. Mm. And there's no way she can backpedal out of this to say why she couldn't come up with a suitable, reasonable. Now, if she comes up and say, well, the statute of limitations passed, and we really didn't have nothing. Mind you, remember I told you, Lee Baca put my daughter's case as a murder case. Mm -hmm. Only so that for the statute of limitations would not run out, mm -hmm. and the resources became even more available. That's why they were able to spend the millions of dollars that they did on her search, mm. because it had been boosted to a murder case. So therefore, she cannot use the whole the statute of limitations ran out. Yeah. So people need to ask her. What are you doing for us? She can't talk about, I want to impose prison reform. Lady, half your money coming from people that are invested in prisons. They don't want no prison reform. So here, and here's the thing. Here's the question. Here is the key. Here's the key question. Like prosecutors are a lot of the time in with the police. That's a given. But how do you run as some type of kind of progressive pro-black or whatever you're trying to do prosecutor? Given this kind of history, like with the number of improprieties and idiosyncrasies and all kinds of like that, like honestly, when I started researching your daughter's case, like the hair started standing up on my back. Like, like how do you, how do you run as a person who stand and, and, and you go to Howard University, that's my alma mater as well as hers, MLK Day, right? And announce your presidency. What? When you didn't do the do, how do you run as being the progressive prosecutor? No, you're just a prosecutor. Like, if you're just a prosecutor, just say you're just a prosecutor like white people are prosecutors. Then we'll all understand. Because I don't know, and maybe you know how you get to run as a progressive prosecutor with this in your background. Correct. And, and, and you know, a lot of things are coming out on Facebook. It's like, they said, oh, so Kamala Harris shouldn't put criminals in jail. And she shouldn't uh, do her job. That's not what I'm saying. You know, if, you know, if you're a criminal and you get caught for doing something, you, you should go to jail. What I'm saying is, what Kamala Harris should do is give us the same treatment that others get. White people get go to jail and get arrested for having dope and, 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 and smoking crack and doing what they do. They get rehabilitation. They get to go to drug and alcohol counseling. Black people, they get 25 to life. And they're in, and in huge numbers. So we're saying that what pleasures do you get I saying you locked up this many African Americans, but yet and still you let this many Caucasians get drug and rehab. Oh, uh, they're not used to a broken home. Or uh, their family, their mother and father got a divorce and he was reaching out. We don't get the same treatment. 
Yeah, and, 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 in ter- and in terms of truancy, she went after truant parents. And I kind of compare that. I know everybody has their criticisms. But I kind of compare that to Marilyn Mosby and Freddie Gray in terms of she tried to stand up for a prosecution. They were hiding evidence and doing all kinds of stuff. The police against the, the prosecutor. But, like, at least you threw, at least you, at least you really tried. At least you really tried to get those officers. You brought them to trial and you tried to get them because you knew it wasn't right. And you did a press conference with you. I don't see any of that here in this situation with Kamala. I said, Kamala, Kamala. Everybody got a problem with it now, but now then the, anyway, but I, I don't see, I don't see these are not the same. And I think I think, you know, I'm gonna let you have the last word and I wanna thank you for coming on after this because I've held you for almost 47 minutes. But I think the the, the, the issue for me, the issue for me is that we like your 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 daughter's situation screams out. For a moment when we really needed a black woman who was a black woman to be like, no, nah, this ain't right. Don't none of this sound right and to stand up. Correct. If you can't stand up in that moment, I don't see Correct. how you stand up for us as a community. I don't see any Marilyn Correct. in you. I don't see no Marilyn Mosby in you. None. So I want you to have the last word, brother. I, I appreciate you coming on, but I want you to have the last word because I won't keep you too long and I'm going to finish up. Okay, no problem. <laughs> the last word I have to say is this here. With all the Me Too that's going on mm-hmm. that has hit the radar mm-hmm. with these men being inappropriate. And predators. Mm-hmm. That, that is a time that this woman and any woman in power should have taken my treat's case and put it on the same level as everything else that's going on right here. Mm. I don't know how they missed the mark on Maitreese Richardson. With all of this Me Too going on, how do you miss the mark with the biggest justice system, the justice system in the world? Los Angeles County is the largest law enforcement in the world with the highest prisoners in the world. Mm. You just don't miss that mark. Mm. You're, you're making friends, but you're not making relationships and building things and trust with people. And, uh, and, 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 and the only thing that people see in Kamala is that brief interview with Jeff Sessions while the, while the cameras was on, and that was her starring moment to sock it to him and say, now, you know, if you can interview that man like that, you should have interviewed Paul Tanaka, which was the undershelf to Lee Baca. You should have done Lee Baca the same way. And when he had to step down, you should have held Jim McDonald the same accountability. Like, okay, this is where they left off at. I'm going to hold you accountable to finish the investigation and make it impartial and make it fair and bring it to us. None yeah. of that happened. They're yeah. busy having lunch. And on the golf course, they're having fun. Now, let me ask so, you a question. I remember I remember a young lady, Natalie, I think it was Natalie Holloway. Everybody, she was on an island somewhere, wasn't even here. That, and that was a huge investigation. I want to ask you this before you go. If, if, if my trees, if your daughter had been white, do you think this would have made a difference? Hell yeah, it would have made a difference. With no doubt. First of all, it wouldn't have never happened. Mm-hmm. It, would, it wouldn't have never happened if my trees was white. See, what they were banking on was the fact that she was black. She had an address of Los Angeles uh, near South Central, and they underestimated her family. Mm. They thought that she, they didn't know how to diagnose her as having a mental breakdown or bipolar. They thought it was some substance, and she came out there from South Central to do what she did, and, and it happened. They did not think in a million years that she was a college graduate with honors, um, that she had a father that was going to take this to the next 40 years till I get justice, that her mother was about something, her stepfather was about something, her stepmother is about something. They didn't, they didn't take none of this in consideration. So I know somewhere, somehow, when they sat down at the table and they kept getting this and they keep coming up, I know they say, we messed up. 
using the F word. Mm. I know. And they know all the time that we're not going to let it go. We're not. Okay. Well, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to thank you um, for, for deciding and, and, and to, to come on. That is, that is my Teresa's mother. I put up on that from a, from an article I got that on. Um, I want to, I want to thank you for coming on and having the conversation. Um, and you know, the, the, the breaking Brown family stands with you. We, we support you. Um, and you know, and I just, you know, and, and we want to do everything that we can to kind of highlight what justice looks like for us. Like, not like, not like some grand, we're united, whatever, but justice for a specific group. And in your case, a specific person, your daughter. And so, you know, what, whatever little bit that we could do um, to push that forward into the conversation today, we are happy to do it. And we are thankful that you decided to come on, sir. So we appreciate you. Hey, I appreciate you guys too. Every little bit is going to help. And uh, thank you very much for having me. Thank you, sir. We'll be in contact. I appreciate you. All right. Have a good night. You too. I, 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 you know, Breaking Brown family, you know, I, I don't even know. Like, I don't, I, but I want to, I want to play something. I want to play something because, you know, parents do, parents do the best that they can because this is their child. So they do the best that they can to, um, to be tough and to do what they can to gain justice for their children that's what they do and i appreciate i appreciate mr richardson coming on and doing just that but i want to show you i want to bring to your attention while he's off the line because i don't want him to have to hear none of this i want to play for you the calls that my Teresa's mother made to the police department and the calls that were made about her, which make it fairly obvious that they said somebody said that like she was she was talking about she was from Mars and she was there to avenge like Michael Jackson. She was obviously these are telltale signs of like this person is having a mental health crisis. She did a sobriety check. She wasn't drunk and she had parents who cared about her. So what I'm going to do just right now is just play you that audio. So that you really sort of begin to understand what actually happened. So give me a few minutes and then we'll we'll be right back. Okay. Do Do you know if she's if she's here now or was she released? They said she was released. Okay. And what time was she released? Um, at, at just shortly after 12 a.m. Yeah. Normally, I we wouldn't I wouldn't recommend doing one. Uh, that soon. Um, right. What is the time frame? You know, I I guess probably 24 hours would be reasonable. I mean, if okay. if there would be some some mitigating factors, you know, where you know you su would suspect maybe something. You know, well, not yeah. Right, right. She doesn't know the area. She's never been in your area. Before. Where where do you where does she live? She is unfamiliar with that area. Do you she think she? possibly could have gotten a bus home no. and um, listen my child has never ridden a bus okay. no right. she would not know how to ride a bus <laughs> i would probably wait till you know early this morning and if she doesn't turn up you can certainly call i don't suspect anything um bad happened i'm concerned because uh, well first of all i thought they were going to keep her overnight because she was highly intoxicated mm -hmm. um Something, something is obviously going on with her. Have you she talked tried, to the jailer? And yes, 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 I have. He said he tried to get her disabled because she was an adult. They had to let her go. I, I believe that she is highly depressed, um, and she, she, she's in a depressive state. You know, it could be possible that maybe she... Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of options and I, a, a lot of possibilities, and I don't think all of them would be, um, you know, something dire. But I can certainly understand your fears, you know, being your daughter and all that. Well, um, I think she's depressed. That's what has me is more that what, That's worried that. you more than just her. Okay. That and the fact that she's in an area where she doesn't know where she's at. Yeah, does so. she take medication at all? 
No, she didn't. I, I, I believe it's a state that she's in right now because of just the, the weird activity that's been going on. What, what's, your name? What's, that? what's your name? What's your name? Her name is Maitreese okay. Richardson. Okay. And your name, ma'am? Latisse. Okay. Latisse. Here, here's what I want you to do. Let, yes. get, why don't you wait a couple hours and, and give us some time to kind of, I'll go back and talk to the jailer and try and get a timeline of when she was released and, you know, make sure she's not asleep in our lobby or anything like that. And then why don't you give us a call back in a couple hours if she hasn't shown up okay. or made contact with you, then maybe we can do something for you, okay? No, well, Sheriff Station, I'll you up, yeah. Yeah, hi. Hey, uh, this is uh, uh, Smith at Cold Canyon. We had a prowler walking around through the backyard here, but we don't know what the situation was. I don't know if you have a unit in the area. It might do a little drive-by or something. Okay, where is this at? This is Cold Canyon, like on Cold in Monte Nito. Um, but it's in the back of the house, uh, which is right where Wood Bluff hits, the, hits uh, Cold Canyon. Uh, and we just had a strange woman walking through the backyard here. It's a fairly large property, and she was sitting on the step right, right in the back of the house here. Uh, this is kind of a circular driveway, and the gates were closed, so we don't know where this woman came from. You said the cross was wood bluff? Yeah, that's right. Uh, there's there's a, a horse trail, a hiking trail access through here, but we've never had this kind of happen, thing happen before. Uh, what she look like? White, black, Hispanic? Uh, uh, you know, a tall, slim, black woman with Afro hair. Uh, how tall? Uh, well, she was sitting down, stretched out on the wooden steps in the back of the house, hard to tell. But uh, she looked like she might have been medium to slightly tall, uh, with a big afro hair, very skinny. And I think she was wearing maybe jeans or tight pants with a t-shirt. You've never, you've never seen her there before? No, never. Nobody ever does that. I mean, the, the people hike on the trail all the time. We, you know, The trail goes through our property, but we leave it open on purpose because it's kind of a nice thing for horses and people. And so she's laying across the, she was laying across the steps, or? But she was sitting, kind of sprawled out on the, on the wooden steps in the back of the house, right against the back of the house. She's yeah. since got up and left? Uh, she's since gone, yeah. She's been gone about five minutes now, but as we thought it over, we thought maybe a little drive-by wouldn't be a bad idea. And what direction was she, she last seen headed? Never saw her. She, well, once she left, she just disappeared. Uh, we, I moved from one window to another. I said to her, I, I hollered down, are you all right? And she said, I'm just resting, or something like that. Uh, but... Uh, she's certainly gone out of her way to get to that close to the house because the, the hiking trail is not that close. It's on the ridge. All right. Well, since we haven't checked the area for Appreciate that very much. Not a problem, sir. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Now, let me, let me pause. Let me pause for one second, fam, because understand one thing. Understand one thing. A single black woman, very skinny, is considered a prowler. Right? Now, we have to go to, like, why a single black woman, very thin woman, that's a prowler around your house. This is a KTLA um, anchor, I think, also, who made this call. Now, I want, you to, I want you to pay close attention to one other thing. You heard the mother crying, saying, you know, I'm looking for my child. The, the audio, for whatever reason, skipped ahead. And what you don't hear, and what I'm going to try to play back for you now, you do not hear the first call from the mother. The first call, from the, the second call with the mother was she's crying and she's saying, you release my child. You have to understand that in the context of the first call, which I'm going to try to play right now, because you have to understand the context of it all, not just one part of it. We have a guest here who is refusing to pay her bill, and you think she may, I mean, she sounds really crazy, she may be on drugs or something. Um, we are wondering if someone can come by and pick her up. Okay, well, what's the address there? It's 27400 Pacific Coast Highway. And uh, is she a white, black, Asian, Hispanic? She's a um, young black girl. She's probably in her 20s. Okay, what's she wearing? She's wearing a black t-shirt and I think blue jeans. Is she with anybody else? No, it's just her. I am calling. I'm a little frazzled right now. I understand my daughter is being brought into the station. My Therese Richardson. Have they made it to the station yet? And she's been booked. Okay, is, is do you know where she's coming from? Uh, it's some restaurant out in Malibu, and I, I didn't even think to get the name. The okay, manager's yeah, name the is. Only, the only place we have somebody that's in custody that they just announced on the radio that they're coming up is from Joffrey's in Joffrey. the Pacific Highway. It's okay. the only female that's being brought up to the station as we speak. They actually just put it on the radio right before you call. 
Okay, okay. I'm I'm her mother, oh, okay. and are you guys want to book her and then release her on her own re recognizance tonight because it, it, it's dark. She doesn't have a car, and I don't want her wandering out. I'm I'm totally just taken aback because this is so out of character for her. Yeah. And you'll see when she comes in, she she's well spoken. I think the only way I will come and get her tonight is if you guys are going to release her tonight. Yeah. If, if going to be held in custody for some type of arraignment tomorrow, mm -hmm. then I will wait until tomorrow. She definitely has no place, you know, I mean, she's not from that area, and I would hate to <laughs> wake up to a morning report, girl, mm -hmm. lost somewhere with her head chopped off, uh -huh. so I guess I would have to come and get her, oh my God. Yeah, we're in a great hose. The only thing is, at least in the station here, she will be separated, so nobody's going to be with her. Uh, so at least that's, you know, the plus thing, so you don't have to worry about her safety. I don't want my daughter lost somewhere with her head chopped off. And, you know, we have to stop this whole thing. Like, if we don't do one other thing, people, we got to stop this whole thing of blaming black people first. The reason she called in, because she wanted to find out if you're going to release her tonight. If you're going to release her tonight, I'm coming tonight. If you're not going to release her in the morning, I have another child at home, and there's no reason for me to come. If you're going to have her arraigned or something, there's no reason... That's a perfectly, that's the, that's the, that is the most sensible thing to do. If you're not going to release my child tonight, I'm not coming tonight. But I'm coming there tonight if you release her tonight. I don't want her outside alone. I want to be there when she gets out. Is she going to be here? Okay. Nobody said, and, and is a given it like, no, no, no. She's, she's, she's just coming in. She's not going to be released or whatever, whatever, whatever. Then you find out she did get released into the night. When the whole point of your specific call was for her not to be released. And then the second part of it is this lazy, this lazy donut eating dude on the phone is like, well, you know, well, I, you know, and, and when, the, when the whole, the, the, the other part of it, the missing call is like, well, I wouldn't put in a missing person's report. Like, give it like two hours. When you hear somebody, when you hear a police officer say, give it two hours, that means like, give it long enough to where I'm not on shift no more because I don't want to deal with it. Where's the accountability in that? Where is the accountability in any of what we're dealing with? There is no accountability. You big pudgy don't not even little man. Like you just didn't want to deal with it. And then you all said that like, no, you're not. no, she'll be fine. She'll be safe here. You notice she got brought in for mental issues. She said drunk. That woman said she's drunk or crazy. They did a sobriety test so she wasn't drunk. That means she was having a severe mental breakdown. She was talking about Mars and Michael Jackson and she was going to Hawaii. Like if you read it, she was saying things that let you know, okay, this person is having a mental break. You let somebody who was having a mental break outside in the middle of the night, unfamiliar territory, no money, no phone, just out. And when their father called, you say something to the fact that we're not a babysitter. And that's a black woman, I think, who said that. If we want to talk about sisterhood. We're not babysitters here. But the mama called and said, I don't want my child to be outside. Y'all could have just called the mama and said, listen, we got to let her go. We don't have no room. You got to come pick her up. And that mama that I heard on that call would have picked her baby up. And that didn't happen. And then not only did it not happen, everything that did happen didn't get investigated by your sister girl. So you want to go to Howard University and announce, and what, from what I see, this case was not thoroughly investigated. Everything from how she was released to the coroners not being there and the, and the regular police picking up, picking up bodies. And the mother went back to the crime scene and found her daughter's finger bone. She was trying to set up a memorial and find her daughter's finger bone. Nobody wants to talk about this sloppy work and everything was done. And then one of the guys, the chief, whoever it was, got promoted. Not by People were getting promoted around this. There was no accountability. There was only careerism. And we have to have that conversation. You know, that was a great time to have a black woman in office. Except we didn't. What's the point of electing somebody, American DOS, and she's not dead? We know, we know Kamala's not dead. Or what's the point of electing somebody that went to Howard University if you're not going to do the right thing when you have a sister here? This is, this, is a, this is a black girl. Black, I don't care, 24, you still a kid, man. I remember myself at 24. I ain't know nothing. 
Like you still young. What's the point if you're not going to protect young sisters? Don't call yourself black if you're not going to do this. Well, I did this interview. I did this. I did this. I did. No. Don't call me your sister if you're not doing a thorough. And you need to sign that paperwork yourself. Sign that paperwork yourself. That's what has to happen. Now I'm gonna. I know we're hour in. Um, give me a give me a couple of seconds um, to, to 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 reorient the the calls, and then we're gonna take we're gonna take some calls. And I'm gonna have a conversation with you all about what you all thought about the interview, what you think should have happened, where we go from here, and all of that sort of thing. Give me two minutes. We'll be right back. to the calls i want to two things two things i want to put out we don't have context so sometimes we tend to believe that you know well this was just a busy police station we love to get other people the benefit of the doubt but this is the lost hills uh, uh, uh sheriff station 
the deputy that, that, that the mother talked to was able or had direct contact with my trees. It wasn't like this was like a, a, a humongous jail where you just, you know, there's so many people where we just can't get through and we don't know. That's not the case. He had direct contact. All these people did. People were choosing not to do their job. People were choosing to relegate their responsibilities to other people and not care about the black woman who was there who was having a mental break. That's what we're dealing with. This is a small little like podunk satellite station. This man ain't busy. And somebody said in the chat, like, well, why should we be surprised? We shouldn't be surprised about this. Nobody is surprised. We're talking about how we change it. Get this little cynical stuff out of your system where you feel like, well, we're not. This is just the way America is. This is the way, like, this is what we let America be. That's true. The question becomes, how do we get involved in our politics in a way that changes what America is to something that benefits us? I think, I think that that cynical laziness, I think cynicalness is a laziness in our community. But we'll be like, well, that's just the way the man is, you know. He, that's just, he gonna be like that. I, I ain't surprised. It's not about whether or not you're surprised. None of us are surprised. The question becomes, do we elevate people who show an utter disregard? For the life of other black people. Do, do we elevate them and allow them to claim our legacy in this country? That becomes the question. The question is not whether or not we're surprised about America. But are we willing to change America? Are we willing to do the work necessary to change the country that we live in? That becomes the primary question. So I'm going to go to the, um, I'm going to go to the calls. Um. I am going to go 205. 205, I'm coming to you. What's your name? Where you coming from? That's weird. You there, 205? Can you hear me? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, thank you, Yvette. Um, I'd like to say, first of all, I appreciate you for being with us. Thank you. Uh, thank you. 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 Thank to change things in America because we are citizens. A lot of us don't even feel like we're citizens. And I heard the father say they did not expect us to have a family net, a, a web, a social web of a strong family. And and that's and that's really important that, that y'all get that word out about how she was so talented. To, to black life. You see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. And, yeah, yeah, ma'am. And, um, i just like to say, uh, I'm going to end by saying this because I don't want to take up too much time. Okay. i just like to say that we have to be very serious about reparations. Like, that's a mm. no, that's a deal breaker. That's a deal breaker. And not just for Kamala. That's yeah. what Maxine Ward, that's for anybody that comes to our community. Absolutely. That's a deal breaker issue. And I just like to end by saying that and thank you for all the educating us. No, you thank did. you, fam. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it, fam. I appreciate it. And I, and I agree with that. Forget about what everybody says about, well, they they going to gonna never do that. They, uh, you know, I'm sure they, I'm sure when slaves were getting lynched and somebody said, you know, we ought to be free. Somebody said, well, they're they, they going to never do that. You think they're going to never do that. You better go back over there and pick your cotton. Stop talking this crazy talk. Like, you don't, you don't, you don't define, you don't define your agenda by what, by what racists are okay with doing. And part of the reason that we're here is that America doesn't want to deal with racists. Because if you really deal with our agenda and American DOS agenda, that means you got to defeat them racists. That means you got to relitigate the Civil War. That means you got to redo a lot of stuff you don't want to do. So it's best, let me just replace these people. I ain't got time to deal with all that. But our agenda needs to be defined by us, not by what we think as well. This is what's feasible. No, no. I'm going to um, 909. 909, what's your name? What are you calling from? What's on your mind? Hello, this is Keith in California. How you doing this evening? Pretty good. Fantastic. Um, first and foremost, of course, uh, we always want to give compliments because this is excellent investigative journalism. Um, a lot a lot better than any of the political pundits or any type of major organization um, that simply ignores
more are issues out here, particularly in California. So I have to, you know, pay homage to you for okay. the diligence in which you're doing your job. Um, I wanted to make a quick statement. Um, okay. I actually got in contact with the gentleman out here in California. Uh, I won't go on record and say his name because he'll mm. come down and actually speak at the community college for a okay. Black History event. But he's a former budget secretary for Kamala Harris. Uh, she was attorney general. Okay. He's a brother actually out of Oakland, and now he works for a state legislator, and he passed the 1421 bill, which allows for the disclosure of all police records as public information just by simply asking, which they're fighting tooth and nail. Um, essentially, he said as budget director up there in, Sac in Sacramento, he first met a C Kamala Harris and he was excited. He said, oh, this is the first sister girl, uh, AG. He took a picture with her. Mm. And he said shortly after working with her, he noticed that she would not address any black issues. This brother is straight out of Oakland. Mm. Real dude. He's a millennial, 38 years old. I got his name. And again, now he's the chief of staff of a legislator. So he holds clout. And he said initially... Uh, the opioid epidemic was taking effect in California, which affected everybody. And he brought it up as budget director. And she was like, yeah, let's go ahead and get it. Let's work on that. But when he started specifically speaking on something like syrup or lean, um, which is basically cough syrup with codeine in it, which mm. has the same effects over a long period of time, Kamala didn't want to hear it. Or excuse mm. me, Kamala, excuse me. Um, mm -hmm. So he said, at that point, he said, I had had a picture with her. He said, I could have just taken that picture back and snatched it down. So, I mean, she's been um, adversarial to the black community for quite some time. And I'm, I'm so grateful that you're getting it out there because people just see the light skin, pretty eyes. She was endorsed by Obama. And people think that she's pro-black. She's totally not. She's the the opposite, the juxtaposition. The you know, she's, she's not for us. She really is out in a vindictive way to essentially um, destroy the black community. Well, well I, I think, I think, and I think in that sense, she's just, she's just like everybody else. And like, she cloaks herself in like brownness to make people believe like, it's almost like brownness is to us like some kind of weird superpower. Like, she can't be against us, she's brown. And it's just like, no, what you mean? That? Like, no, she doesn't have a history with you. And you know, she went for the, she graduated from a Canadian school, Indian mother, Jamaican father, who she never really spent time with that I can see. So why do you keep telling me that like, her being brown means that like, she's gone. Haven't we lived this before? <laughs> This is what I keep thinking, uh, like, come yeah, on, man. You, 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 you hit the nail on the head, but again, like, you're doing thorough investigative journalism, you, Mr. Antonio Moore, um, and all the other left-wing uh, black pundits are actually really commenting on this, including Black Agenda Report. I gotta give a shout-out. Uh, Margaret, Margaret, Kimberly Margaret actually did a very prolific piece called, uh, she's made a career of destroying black lives. And one last thing, I mm -hmm. promise last, last. Sure. Up in Northern California, you should check this out. It's a very bizarre story. There was a, a police cult that was believing that there were the Knight Templars or Masonic Templars and doing all kind of audacious crimes mm -hmm. in uh, San Francisco while she was the attorney general up there or the uh, DA up there. And this happened on her watch. So she has a, a habitual habit of overlooking really bizarre incompetence and malicious behavior. And you're just highlighting it. But check out that article. Okay. It was done by the San Francisco Post. It's a very bizarre and disturbing read. It sounds but, like again, it. Fam. Thank you. It sounds like it. I appreciate it. Listen, here's the thing. Here's the thing, too, um, that I want to highlight. When I talk about Marilyn Mosby in Baltimore, and how when she prosecuted over Freddie Gray, you had police officers running around hiding stuff, evidence from her, trying to make her look stupid, right? Trying to make her, well, she's just a moron. She don't know. And then everybody's like, oh, see, it didn't stick. Whatever. But you have to have people in that space who will really be like, I don't care. I'm going to go to bat. This is, this is what I do. Now you have her saying that I'm not prosecuting, you know, marijuana. Like you have to have those things. Regard. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that she's perfect. Anybody else is perfect. But you have to have people who are in that space who are willing to advocate in that way, in that very kind of specific way. That's how you assess people. You have a group. How do they advocate on behalf of that group? That's how you make your assessments. That's how blacks. That's why. That's how American deals. That's how we do it right. She came out and said. I want the people to the press conference. I want the people to know I heard you and I'm prosecuted. And she went with that and got all the heat from that from the police. 
And it, uh, please, please, Marilyn Mosley, don't go campaign for Kamala, for Kamala, because I know that's what happened next. Oh, well, she says, she says Marilyn Mosby is the one, so let's get Marilyn Mosby on the campaign trail. Let's get Mosby over here. That's how it always works. We need some cover, cover, incoming fire. Please don't do that. Stay where you at. Say you got an existing engagement or something, because I, I foresee things. I don't have a crystal ball, but I know how these things work sometimes. So I'm going to my next call, 615. 615, I'm coming to you. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Yes, my name is Dean. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. Hello, Mrs. Connell and the Breaking Brown family. What's going on? Uh, it was really, it was really heart, heartbreaking to hear those 911, uh, hear the, the, the call where the mother had called in to the police station, worrying about the, the whereabouts of Mrs. Richardson. And just just hearing that and hearing the story behind it from the her father's perspective, it, it brings everything, it, it kind of creates uh, like a, uh, a connection because see, I have two sisters, mm. right? Okay. And I, my, my, the point I'm trying to make is this, I hope, now I, I'm more likely, this is not the case, that any of Mrs. Kamala, the so-called prosecutor, I'm going to give her that title now, the so-called uh, prosecutor Kamala Harris, I hope any of her sorority sisters in the AKA movement, that they see this broadcast that you post out here, and I want them to place themselves in Mrs. Richardson's shoes. Mm. I want them to place their daughter in Mrs. Richardson's shoes and see that after looking at this story, would they themselves if they had any integrity, could they even just stand on the idea of getting behind her and trying to push her towards the overall office? Mm. Because if she don't care about uh, black people on that level right there, just imagine what her carelessness would be on the national level. Mm. Yes, sir. And, I, and, and, yeah, and go ahead. I, I don't want to. I don't want to take up any more time. But that right there, I, I hope that this story reaches them. And let it sink down real deep before they think about casting a ballot for that so-called prosecutor in 2020. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, fam. I mean, we got to talk about what family means. Like, who is your family? Is this young lady who, you know, who, you know, was re who had a mental break, was released from, was released from jail at midnight? into a dark and remote and, and 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 no lights woods little coyotes and stuff and 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 they said the, they said the reason that they found her body was the park rangers were looking for um the, they said the mexican cartel had been planting marijuana or something and so they were looking to see if they had come back and replanted so you're telling me that there was some cartel in that canyon or something around there what was going on some weird stuff going on that's what you released her into so is my trees your sister or is Kamala your sister? Because these two people ain't the same. I'm trying to get us to understand sisterhood. And when you have Kamala on video talking, kind of giggling and laughing about, you know, um, prosecuting parents of, of, of who had truant kids. Now, when you when you when you when you prosecute a parent who has a truant child, that parent goes to jail. That's called separation of family. So, Kamala, are you telling me that you don't have any problem with separating American DOS and black families, but you have, you have, but you don't, but oh my God, Trump, the border and the children and the migrants have been separated and I stand with them. Well, go stand with them then. Go stand at the border with them. You obviously don't stand with us. Let's, let's redefine. Listen, my black sisters, American DOS, let's redefine sisterhood. And with my allies too, let's redefine what sisterhood is supposed to look like and what our responsibility is to one another and who even gets to be included in that group. Because if you can't help this, if you can't, if you cannot help her, you know, I, I, I don't know that you can help me. I don't know that you even want to help me. If you can't help my trees, I don't know if you want to really help me as a group. It doesn't seem like you were really invested in helping her. So how are you going to yeah, get to the bottom and hold people responsible? It's obviously stuff with, it's obvious that there, to me that there was a, looking at it as a cover up. We don't even know what happened about in terms of how the bones were taken, the court didn't take them. 
there were I read somewhere that there were there were bones missing from the neck um that would were used to show whether or not she was strangled but they didn't necessarily have them all because of how they were collected there's no responsibility in that are you going to answer for that so i'm going to my next call i'm going to 562 562 what's your name where you calling from what's on your mind I'm Angela Jones, and oh, I didn't mean to say my last name, but <laughs> all of from Southern California. <laughs> Girl, you got me hotter than fish grease over here. I oh, that sounds like the South. We say that hotter than fish grease. Where you say that in California? Where you get that from? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm from Ohio, from many places, okay. but you know, we we just as country as we want to be. We're all, all right. from the South, some kind of way. And I'm still country, even though I'm in California. That's all right. Listen, I have cried like this was my own daughter. Mm. Um, I, I just commend you so much. You. I really didn't get politically active until, uh, was it 2016, when Bernie Sanders was running. And I learned so much. And I have you and Tone Talk to credit for that. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm hot. I, I did everything in my power when Hillary was running uh, to decimate her candidacy. And I am, thanks to you and Antonio Moore, just really committed to doing the same where Kamala Harris is concerned. I have a few questions. Forgive me, I'm just a little nervous okay. because I've been trying to reach you for That's a long fine. time. So just bear with me. Um, this may actually help some others who are on the call that would like to do the same in their communities. Um, first of all, let me uh, help everyone to understand that Jamaica is not a race, that uh, Kamala's father is Indian and white, oh. and that's why he is a descendant of slave owners, in the same way her Indian mother is of Brahmin caste. So she's not even one of us, which really makes her deception just ultra gross and extreme okay. that she's truly caping to be one of us going to howard which i attended howard and then doing all the aka stuff uh we have to come to understand that these monsters are created in the lab long before they're introduced to us so i don't know where i heard that from but do the research that's why he is a descendant of slave jamaica has all different cultures just like right here in America. Next, I wanted to find out from you, how do I gather the Breaking Bat Brown family to form a pack here in Southern California? Uh, one of my colleagues has reached out to you. I don't know if she hit up Antonio Moore to find out because I was posting some information on Kamala on other people's YouTube mm -hmm. and one of the gentlemen he understood my DOS language, which I got from you, thank you. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh my God, you must listen to, he's from out here too. And he's like, you must listen to Yvette Carnell and, and Antonio Moore. And I said, I absolutely do. So I don't know how to gather us to make a pack. Well, and I would like some insight. Well, I, well, you know, I'm just, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm, I've been trying to, I've been trying to figure out how to do the same thing you do, and I've been, I've, I've redid my site like five times and haven't brought it live not one time. But I think, I think, I think, if, I think if you, I think if you, I think if you build it, they will come, right? So the thing is, people okay. have, people have been talking about like, you know, doing something politically in their own communities, and I think that if you like build a website and you, you know, and I, I'm. I'm going. I know I've been talking about this for a year, but I'm going to put my website up, and then you can. I'm gonna have a regional things in it, and you can put like what you're doing in your region. But until that happens, you can actually you could you could like a little just like bare bones website, and just kind of if you want to do like a meet and greet or whatever, I'm sure you could do that. And if you put it, if you post the link in the chat while we're having a conversation or breaking brown live, and just see how many people respond to it in your area, right? So you say, hey, hey, okay. everybody, this is my link. We're going to be doing this um, in Southern California. Um, I'm sure some people will respond to it and be like, "Okay, I'm there." Uh, if not, then you don't have enough people there, and that's. But that's at least you know what you're dealing with or what you're working with, right? 
at least you kind of begin to understand. Okay, well, well, I don't have as many people as I thought, and I got to work on that. We got to build on that. But I think if you if you if you kind of build something and then post about what you're doing and where you're going to be going and 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 we're going to have these kind of meets and greets and decide what we have to do regionally for our specific areas. I think the people who are there who watch and who sh- and, and and who routinely tune in to me and Tone will actually you know start to kind of migrate into like what you're trying to do. But I have to ask you a question, though, fam. I gotta go. I can't. I gotta go back to what you just said. You said Kamala Harris' daddy is is not all black. Is this what you just said? He's not black. He's Indian and white. Jamaican, not black Jamaican. Now, were you there? How did you find this out? I'm so confused. Girl, I I have watched. So much YouTube and trying <laughs> to destroy this woman, I can't even share with you where I got that. Okay, okay, I understand. I That's fine. I do Google the same thing. A little further, but uh, there's no black Jamaicans that I know. That what what threw me when when you guys were talking about her being black Jamaican is that I don't know of any blacks that own slaves in Jamaica. And so I was listening yeah. to something or read something and I learned that her father is Indian and white. And that is how he, I, I've been to Jamaica often. He's Indian and white Jamaican. And that's how um, he is uh, just a proud descendant of slave yeah, well you know remember on the show yeah. i said he sounded it didn't sound like he regrettably said like you know if i found out somebody in my line on so i was like regrettably i'm not getting the full reparations package because somebody owns slave or whatever like i would but i would I, it, it did sound like he was kind of proud but I, what i'm trying to figure out if what you're saying is true i haven't investigated everybody so don't come at me but if that's true if you have indian white <laughs> and indian I'm just trying to figure out how you claim black then. If that's true, how you claim how how are we claiming black? How are we claiming black and then American US? I think that I think I think there's some confusion because uh her father is Jamaican and uh because we can't afford to travel, we really don't know, you know, when you say Jamaican, the first thing this is my made up story. Okay. The first thing we're thinking is when you say our father's Jamaican is that he's black. Yeah, that's what I think. That's automatic with most of us native DOS in this country because we're not travelers like that. Like I said, uh, we, we don't have our reparations yet. We don't really travel. So anywho, uh, what I'm saying is that this is, this is I, I hit up tone because you got so many friends on Facebook, I can't even be a friend of you. I just have to listen and pray. I get you have, the You have to, you know what uh, you got to do? I, you got to cancel your original request and send it again. Because <laughs> I, I haven't even been checking. <laughs> so cancel that send again. If I go in my room tonight, I will, when I go to bed, I'll, I'll do it again. <laughs> because you guys, are, you guys are doing a show on Friday. So I did yes. get an instant message to him and I saw it bubble over. So I know he got the information. I was hoping some kind of way to get more tangible for you. Okay. But I just I just hadn't sat down and done the research. But to my understanding, he is Indian and white, descendant of uh, slave owners in Jamaica. Wow. Okay. And that's why I'm saying her deception is just it's just abominable. Because what they're counting on is symbolism yet again, like they did with Obama instead of the tangibles yeah and sadly you know uh we're still stuck on symbolism way too many of my friends with education are just cuckoo for cocoa puffs over kamala <laughs> and all this nonsense <laughs> <laughs> now let me let me let me just tell you Carla. if what you say i gotta i gotta investigate it but if what you say is true i gotta investigate it this is some this is some Rachel Dolezaling, ain't it? If this is, I'm not saying it's true, I don't know. Yes. But I'm just saying this is gonna be a problem if it's true. Girl, I'm here to tell you, you are the one to break this story, okay? I I'm giving it to you in tone to run with it. I need to know also, do you guys plan to destroy uh well, to tell the truth about Cory Booker? So I can decimate him too. I think is he running? I don't even he, know. He's, he's running, he's running the he's, He's running. The only thing I will say, I, the only thing I will say, family, is that there are a lot of truths to be told in the future. 
<laughs> there are a lot of things okay, that will be investigated. We're going to put our Angela Lansbury hats on and we're going to do it. I'm taking up all your time. Listen, who should we vote for? I don't, it's too early. 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 We got to start pushing people. We got to start pushing people on what we believe. We got to start pushing these people on what we want them to see. And when we push them on what we want them to see in their agendas, we got to see who responds to us and says, okay, I'm going to put that in my agenda. And who says, well, no, I can't do that. It's too soon, though. It's too soon. It's too soon to, to get okay. our stuff behind anybody. Let me, let me ask you this. Do we have enough money in the Blake and Brown family to push Nina Turner, Senator of Ohio? I gotta, I gotta, I, listen, Nina, Nina gotta talk to me. Nina gotta tell me what she doing. She gotta, she gotta, she gotta grab onto the American DOS thing and tell me what she about. Like, we gotta have a conversation. If I ain't had no conversation, I ain't putting no money nowhere. I gotta have a conversation. Well, why see, listen, uh, it can't be, she, she is more us than any of us. I get, I get it. I, I understand it. I understand it, but I, I have decided I got neither conversation. I, I I ain't endorsing Bernie. Somebody got to talk to me. I got to listen. I We got to put it on the agenda. But somebody, we not, I, listen, our group is not going to be ignored no more. When you go and, and you talk to people, you talk to Reverend Al who don't represent nobody. No, you need to have a conversation. I need to have a conversation. I have a whole group here that's bigger and, 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 and more well-educated. And, and I'm not talking about a degree. I'm talking about just in terms of being informed about what's going on. Why we can't have a conversation. No, how you gonna let Reverend Abby be a king maker? I need to have a conversation. <laughs> I need to have a conversation. Okay, one last thing. Uh, Marilyn Mosby is the real progressive prosecutor. Mm. Okay? While Kamala is pretending to be, Marilyn Mosby is what that really looks like for anybody who needs an example. And uh, just keep just keep doing what you do. I, will. I love you. God I love will. the Break It Brown family. I'm in full support. I'm pushing you Thank on you, every one of my <laughs> social media outlets and trying to grow your subscriber base. I appreciate it, fam. I appreciate you. You put in work. That's what we have to understand. Like all of our people, like people put in work differently. Like that's when you people don't see people don't view that as work. Like that is that's putting in work. I don't when you when you're posting my stuff or. Going to battle on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, that's putting it that's 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 real work to influence members of our group. That's what that looks like. But yeah, we gotta have a conversation. Y'all can't tell me Al hey, got a bunch of people with a P.O. box and, and me and Tone can't have a conversation. We gotta have a conversation. You gotta you gotta it's a whole nother group you gotta talk to now. So 707, I'm coming to you. 707, what's your name? What you call it from? What's on your mind? You know, a lot of us are so emotional and, you know, we may have a situation where 
just like Trump voters, went in the closet and voted for him. You know, the mommy and dad just forget the ATA, and he said, oh, well, we're looking at everybody. You know, we have to grow up, But at the end of the day, you know, they still hung up on that illusion. So I just think that that's something that we should be thinking about. You know, maybe she announced early so she can see exactly what her base will be. And we need to challenge that with just making sure that everybody, every black person, any political position is doing what they're supposed to do from now on. Mm. And again, thank you. Love you. Thank you, fam. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, fam. I appreciate the, I appreciate the call. Listen, um, I appreciate that, fam. Yeah, we got to look at that. Um, Tomorrow, which is uh, Friday, I will be on Tone Talk Show. Um, uh, so tomorrow, check the Dr. Sandy Darity will be on as well with me. So we're going to have this whole conversation. We're going to chop it all up and do what we do. Uh, you know, and you, you all remember Dr. Sandy Darity got a lot of this started. Economist quoted at the Atlantic. Um, and we're going to talk about Booker. We're going to talk about Warren. That's going to be 7 p.m. Uh, PS Pacific time. Uh, that's going to be 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, so check that out. YouTube, Tone Talks, check us out. Tomorrow, we're going to have a conversation um, if everybody's okay with having the conversation. So tune in tomorrow to Tone Talks when we, when we, when we talk about that. I'm going to 732. 732, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? What's going on, Yvette? This is Chris from Jersey. How you doing tonight? Pretty good, Chris. How you doing? I'm doing all right. First and foremost, um, shout out to you and Tone. Thank you for having um, Brother Richardson on. Really appreciate it. Um, you know, his, him sharing his story and shedding light on that, that, that really painful topic. That's something mm -hmm. I hadn't heard of. Um, so that was really insightful for me. Kind of get to the point, Yvette. Um, I'm not really concerned about the Breaking Brown family as far as what we know and what we kind of understand about mm -hmm. uh, Kamala Harris. You know, what I'm really concerned about is, is broader black America and the country as a whole. You know, yeah. I watched her uh, CNN town hall the other night and I said, wow. You know, first and foremost, this is a Democrat's A1 candidate. Yeah. Um, this is their best shot to challenge Trump. And the fact that they're putting her out this early, she's stepping out this early. And, and on that stage like that, I said she has every, I, was, I, I actually got a little afraid because I said she has everything necessary to win this election mm. and seriously challenge Trump. So it's, it's obvious to me. I mean, we're in the area of, era of Me Too. She's a woman. She's a woman of color. She's the child of immigrants. Look to how many groups that's going to speak to just all yeah, those facts. She's well-spoken. She's well-spoken. She's got the physical appearance. She has a sense of humor. Um, I mean, this woman is a bomb of 2.0. And, and I am really concerned. I think that she is really going to challenge for that Democratic nomination. I think she's, as I said, I think this is Democrats' best shot. But going back to my initial statement, we in the Breaking Brown family know. We had this great conversation tonight. You and Tone have been doing the work, seeing us that information. We need, we need, we need, we need to get this out to our networks um, for the folks who, who aren't quite on board yet because I was sitting there watching that and I'm like, you know what, like she's going to, I, I'm convinced she'll easily get, I think, 60% of the black vote. I'd be comfortable betting, that she, uh, the, excuse me, the black, of the black female vote. I'm confident that she'll get that. And mm. she doesn't, it's just the demographics of our population, she, she's going to pull a large chunk of the liberal white vote. She's going to pull a large chunk of that POC voting block. She will move things. And this, this is really concerning to me. So I'd love to hear your feedback on that. No, I know I agree with you. I think this is very concerning to me too. Like me too. I don't pun not include, include. I mean, but intended. But I, 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 I think yeah. I think she ticks off all the boxes. I think that's the best way to put it, right? She ticks off all the boxes. Yeah. Like she ticks off all the stuff. Absolutely. Like you just mentioned, people call a woman, and I saw her. Like I saw her when she made that speech. There was a moment, and it was so choreographed. It was kind of like Beyonce's video. Y'all remember that Beyonce video? Ring me alone. I've been through this too long. And I was like, oh, that's been too long. I'm like, but it was, you can see that. I, I, I love that song back in the day, but I mean, back in the day, younger. But I mean, the, I'm saying that in terms, it was, it was like, you could, the moves were very choreographed. And it wasn't dance move choreographs. It was just like 
you know, Beyonce in the chair moving around choreographed. That's what I saw with Kamala, with, with Kamala when she was, when she, there was a moment where she did something and she kind of just like, you know, her neck was doing the sister thing, the, the black woman thing. And I was like, this is choreographed. Yvette, Yvette, let me throw two, Yvette, let me throw two quick points. You know, with the Willie Brown thing, I was like, why are they putting this Willie Brown story out so early? I saw Fox cover it, uh, cover it, but then some other minor news outlets. And you know, it probably the Dems are going to steer clear of that, and not probably touch that if they are running against her in the primary. But it was, I was just thinking, you know, we have a short attention span, so why not put your SHIT out up front early, get it cleared out the air, and we move on for that. I think that's that was one thing that caught my attention. The other thing, when she was at the town hall, the white a white student, white male student. And he asked her about her criminal, uh, her her criminal record, okay. her track record while she was DA in California. And I think the essence of his question was, "How do we know that you you changed that what you stood for and the mistakes you made in the past aren't going to follow you, you know, into the presidency or into the future?" And to see the look on her face, like you got the nerve to ask me, I don't know if, there, if anybody else caught that, but watching oh. that when he asked her that question, and her face. You could see her face like, you got the nerve to sit here to ask me that question. <laughs> um, and how she, how she snapped back. She, answered, she, she was professional, but the body language was a snapback. Um, and you could see that, that she got a little shaken with that. Uh, so that, those are things I'm going to definitely keep my eye out for moving forward with the debates. Um, but again, I, I, I don't want us to be naive as the Breaking Brown family. We understand it, we know, but we need to get this out to our network as much as possible. Um, because as your previous caller said, we fall for the okie doke, we fall for the imagery, we fall for the symbolism. She looks good, she's AKA, she's Howard, etc. She's a black woman, POC woman, whatever you want to call her. She fits the imagery and we fall for yeah. the imagery. And she and she fits the and she fits the and she fits the moment. That. She doesn't just fit the imagery, she fits the moment. This is a this is a this is an immigrant moment. And she fits yes. that moment. You're yeah. right. No, you're right. Yep. Thank so. you, Yvette. No problem. No problem. No problem. I'm going now to uh, 202. 202, what's going on? Hey, Vic. What's going on, Alexander? Hey, man. man, that, that. Before I even say that, don't y'all, I'm just looking at the chat right now. I, you know, I might have to nominate Yvette Carnell for a Pulitzer Prize for this one. <laughs> this, this is Stop. an Stop. excellent piece mm. of investigative journalism. This is an excellent piece, Yvette. I want to commend you on that. That's real. Yeah. Th this was very painful, um, you know, being a civil rights attorney and a clergyman. I have to sometimes just distance myself to not be overcome by anger and uh, sadness and, and all of this, but did this, you de you deserve a Pulitzer Prize uh, for this investigative piece of journalism. It ain't about me, though. It ain't never uh, about me. You know that, Alexander. I don't, I, it ain't none of this about me <laughs> in terms of my Well, mission. you, you, no, nah, but this is, this is just great journalism, uh, unlike Rowley Martin. <laughs> 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 listen, Tell listen, you gonna leave serious. you gonna leave Roland alone. Roland wrote for the Galapagos okay, Gazette. He, no he wrote for the Galapagos Gazette. He wrote for Savoy. You know, you like this like 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 pay attention to these these softball questions, man, and these softball stories he's doing. But okay, I, I ain't gonna get my I ain't gonna get he, my he, Listen, wrong, he wrote he wrote for the Greenville the Greenville Goobers. How you how you <laughs> how you like I'm, I I don't have any I don't have anything against Savoy Magazine. I just always wonder, like, how you brag about being a part of something that's not here anymore. Like, it's, it's I mean, that's a defunct public. How do you, nobody runs around, and I I enjoyed Emerge when it was here, but nobody runs around saying, I was, I was, the, I was executive editor at Emerge. Nobody, like, what are you, like, the, the, I think what is happening, right, I, I, and I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you finish, Alexander, but you brought up something I think that's very important. I think what's happening here in our community is that we're in a space that requires a lot of selflessness right and we have a lot of people who are full of self 
who are like advocating for us. And I think those people have to be wiped away because you don't have the only way you can be for self right now and be for yourself is if you are a part of a community that has a lot of wealth. And we don't have that. So you you got to be selfless or you got to get out the way. You can't be talking about, well, you don't know. I got on a tight sweater, but a button's popping off. You don't know. I'm going to lock him into that. That boy <laughs> clean. That boy clean, this, rolling. This, <laughs> this is really, I'm serious. I'm joking, but you know, there is a category uh, under Pulitzer Prize nominations for independent journalism. And I, I really do feel that this piece uh, that you did tonight uh, is very powerful and it, and it fits the bill. You're giving him a voice that obviously Ms. Harris, who was the top cop in California, did not give. And let, let me say this, event. you said something now. You said that you, event, you, you, y'all don't realize, Vent be saying some wisdom off the cuff. Like you said in an off the cuff um, remark a minute ago, but I'm going to highlight it. And I want people to remember she said, because Vent ain't don't be remembering everything she I said. I really don't. Right, so just, like I, just like I predicted, I said, watch very closely where her husband yeah, uh, makes appearances on the campaign trail. Yvette just said something very powerful. You alluded. But I, I really think we need to watch this because I, I've been trying to say how is she going to spin? How is she going to spin her campaign into being a progressive prosecutor? And you just mentioned that Marilyn Mosby. That's why she's setting up her as one of the reasons why she's setting up her campaign headquarters in Baltimore. Mm. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. That little statement you made just kind of flippantly. I guarantee you. That is happening as we speak. Marilyn Mosby is going to give her an endorsement. Yeah, she needs Mosby cover. Because she has to have camera. cover. And she has to have cover from somebody. She has to have cover from somebody who is going to bat with police. And Marilyn Mosby is going to bat with the police. So, and, and, yeah, and, and, that, yeah. and it's sad because that, that whole Marilyn Mosby thing. See, see, I'm looking at this as a safety issue for black people. And I always tell you I don't trust no black person to sitting around white people. But the white supremacy is so bona fide in this society that even black people unknowingly acting in coherence to that racial gravity I was telling you about, they act in the interest of white supremacy and it makes you unsafe. So in the city of Baltimore, you had a black prosecutor that was fighting against black uh, officers and was fighting against a black judge. It was mm. a black judge who acquitted all the officers. That was, those weren't jury trials. Yeah. Those, those were bench trials, and there was a black judge who acquitted all of them and lambastic um, Marilyn Mosby in the news. So I, I'm looking at this. That that I want y'all to You need to do something. Like, like, we need to call that before it comes. Like, we need to put something out. Uh, we need to put the Kamala playbook to office out, listing all the stuff we know she's going to do before she does it. Because I'm telling you, she's going to co-op Marilyn Mosby. I, I think already so see that coming. In. I, I already see that coming. So the, the only thing I wanted to say to y'all on, on this, and I won't hold you, but but a few seconds. Governor Andrew Cuomo of New York was so outraged at black people, unarmed black people being killed by the police in Manhattan. Eric Gardner, Abner Luema. Um, you know, I go on and on. Uh, um, 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 Sean Bell, uh, you go killed on his, the night for his wedding. I mean, I go on and on and on about the black men who've been slaughtered in New York. So Andrew Cuomo, Cuomo got so upset about it that he started to push the legislature. He came up with a policy proposition to push the legislature to take the prosecutorial duties of police officers out of the hands of local prosecutors. And he wanted it to be handled by the Attorney General's Office of New York because he, he like you said a minute ago, prosecutors, local prosecutors, district attorneys are often in the hip pockets of uh, 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 the police, the, the, you know, the police officers there. Uh, and the, we often don't get justice in a situation. And he's been pushing for that. Well, check this out. They were pushing for that in California. And guess who blocked it? Who? Kamala Harris. Uh-oh. Kamala Harris. Uh-oh. 
She refused. She said, as as a ter- I will not prosecute police officers. That's the job of local district attorney. She refused to. Like, like keep in mind, what, what Cuomo proposed is the most progressive and radical reformation of prosecutorial uh, uh, power. Uh, uh, probably since the, the the white man who got elected as district attorney in Philadelphia, who rewrote the handbook for prosecutions in Philadelphia, he's the one who helped Meek Mill get released. Uh, oh, by the way, that jagged black woman—that's another story. But the point I'm making is that she fought against one of the most uh, uh, progressive prosecutorial reform movements in the in in, in the last fifty years. Like she fought against it. Like, like people don't understand her record beyond the whole identity politics thing. Her record is horrible. There's no way you can get that many things wrong and expect for black people to feel like they will be safe mm. in, an, in a safe. country that's run by you. There's no way. Like look, like, look at this. Eric Holder, how many convictions we get in police officers that get under Eric Holder? None. How many convictions we get under uh, uh, Loretta Lynch? None. Jamaican American, a black woman. Now, we didn't get not one prosecution and conviction of a black of a uh, a white police officer for an unarmed shooting of a black body on Barack Obama's watch. Not one. Now, and and and, and didn't get anything on uh, Kamala's watch. Uh, Lacey O'Neill, who is the district attorney of uh, Los Angeles, black woman. She is letting more white police officers off for killing black people than the law allow. Let them go. And Kamala has not once people have begged her to step in and overturn some of those prosecutorial decisions in Los Angeles. And Kamala did, would refuse to do it. Mm. She refused to do it. So I'm saying, like, this, these are serious uh, uh, issues for us uh, to, to, to reckon with. And I, I'll just uh, I'll leave on this. Let, listen to a few of those things that brother said. That brother said something. Remember when Obama said if I had a son, he looked like Trayvon? Yeah. That brother just said if I had, he said Kamala could look like my daughter. So, like, so, so see, this, this is very deep. On some level... We are looking for affinity from people based on the phenotype of melanin content of skin. Mm. We're looking, we're, we're expecting an affinity, a racial affinity. Look, and that lady just told you Jamaica is not a race. That, that's real profound is the country. So you got white Jamaicans in Jamaica. Just like you got white Americans in America. So he said, he said that, 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 uh, uh, a daughter, uh, uh, Kamala could look like my daughter. She inter- He said she interrogated Jeff Sessions, but she never interrogated Lee Baca. Ooh, that was powerful, man. That was powerful. You that was You got on TV and interrogated all the, you know, the attorneys, but you didn't even have the audacity as attorney general to interrogate a sheriff who has now been convicted of corruption. But he wasn't convicted because of you. No. Nope. He had to go outside of you, you. Yeah, it had to go outside of you for a conviction. So what should be noted in this, let's say she's black. Let's say she's black. Let, let's for sake of argument, argument, let's say Kamala is actually black, but she ain't. <laughs> what did her being, what did being black get my trees? What did the attorney general, the top cop in the state, Get the family of my tree. What, what did it get me, Vet? Mm. See, see, if 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 Barack, if we can't hold Barack Obama accountable, if we can't hold black elected officials accountable, then black people should be barred from running for office. Oh, they should be barred. They should be barred because it don't matter if you can't hold them accountable. It does not matter. And so I just I, I look at all of this and it, it's, it's atrocious, event. We need to keep pushing this story. We need to keep pushing this story, and we need to tie it specifically to the fact that here you have a black woman that just graduated from college, and the one person who could have protected her was Kamala Harris, not them deputies. Not Lee, Lee Bobbitt, not none of that. The one person with the the top law enforcement officer in the state of California did not lift a finger to help the family of a black woman. And the last thing he did, he tied that to the Me Too movement. Mm. I 
on your head. That was profound. Because if if, 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 the Me, if the Me Too movement is truly about helping women and the woman who started it was a black woman, then how did, how does Kamala even represent that? Oh, she don't. Like that, he, that, brother, that brother said some powerful stuff. He did. He process the death of his daughter. Yvette, I think they murdered that girl. When I listen to this, when I listen, I listen to this. Well, you know what? I don't think, I don't, see, see we, I, we have, we have different views. I don't think that's a possibility. I think there are a lot of possibilities. I think it's a possibility somebody yeah, walked out there. I think there's a possibility somebody walked out there and murdered her. I also think there's a possibility somebody saw her walking, saw her walking by herself on this long strip of 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 whatever, and picked her up because I'm not gonna get into it, Alexander. But there was some things about her body and how her body was found. Like part of her body was mummified, the other body, the other part was not. Which doesn't make sense. Which looks like the body may have been stored or whatever. Oh, it, I'm not gonna like, get into. Oh, but it's that's a lot. Like, that's like the, the young, the young black male that was rolled up in the carpet. Remember yep, him? Yep. And yep. They said, they said, yeah. I mean, like something. There is definitely some foul play involved in that. And I, I found myself getting so angry because I've been in those situations as an attorney where I have been standing in front of police officers that I believe murdered somebody, and I couldn't prove it. Yeah, I couldn't prove it. Like this is how sinister, man. We behind enemy lines, man. We behind enemy lines, and you have to think about this stuff when you go into that voting booth. It is as serious as my trees. As serious as what do you want to happen if your child get caught in that situation? And and and, and, and not only know. and not only that, not only that, Alexander. The, the thing that really broke me was the mother calling and saying, "I don't want my child to get murdered." Uh. The mother calls and tells uh, you, I don't want my child's head to get cut off or whatever. I want to make sure that when she oh, gets Yvette, released. I, just, I got so event. See, that's why I, had, I almost, almost, almost went, went to bed on that. I mean, I got so angry listening because I've never heard that call. I got so angry listening to that. I got so angry listening to that because I could, you could hear, like she was trying to humanize her daughter to them cops. Yeah. Did you hear the stuff she was saying? Yeah, she, she, was, yeah, saying, she was saying, she was saying my daughter. She speaks very well. You won't believe how, kind of like you won't believe how articulate she is. She's not normally like this. Yeah. All kinds of stuff to try to make you understand that my daughter, I love my baby. That's my baby and she, she's going through something right now. I want to pick my baby up. When she gets out, I just want to pick yeah. her up. That's all I want to do and y'all won't even let her do that. And yeah, and so I, I look at that as when you got white people on the jury in that Trayvon Martin case. You had to work so hard to humanize Trayvon because these because people don't look at us as human. Like people don't understand on a base level the only way slavery, Jim Crow, and lynching and all that shit worked if white people had to otherize us. Mm. They had to otherize us because you can't do that to somebody you think is just like you. And so he understood that intuitively and was on the phone. Oh, I got chills listening to that. I, I, got, I started thinking about that like that was uh, uh, Emmett Till's mama. Like that's like that's how, that's where it went for me. Because at some point, you don't know what the hell happened to your child. You know she don't graduate. She's on, she's on her way uh, uh, to be, and then, and then, then all of a sudden this happens. Yeah. All of a sudden like this, this is, this, this, you know, I don't even know, I don't even know. Uh, I have been, I have seen where police have kept people uh, uh, um, uh, due, you know, to that. We had a situation right here where a state senator in Virginia, his son was mentally ill and had a, a situation when he was out at the mall and they kept him. They kept him overnight. They sent him to a mental institution. Like, we don't get that. Nobody's going to look at us as though they're our child. And the one thing people should get from this, especially black women, is that Kamala Harris did not look at my trees as though she was one of her. You got to get that. You got to get that. Because if you miss that, you're going to go into that voting booth thinking because she looked like you, she is you. She looked at, she saw this case. This case made it all the way to her desk, but she did not see my trees as a part of her clan. Get that. Mm. Get that. Get that. So anytime she start pontificating on that perch about being a black woman or not correcting people when they call her a black woman, this must be thrown in her face. There should be people at the back of town halls with signs that say, what about my trees? Mm. They should be putting that up everywhere she go. Everywhere she go. 
Mm. Everywhere she go. I Maybe I gotta go. I gotta, I understand, understand. I understand. No, I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all be uh, easy, man. Appreciate it, appreciate it, Alexander. Appreciate it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I totally agree with Alexander. That should be everywhere. Like, what, what, what about my trees? I'm going right now to 301. 301, what's going on? Yeah, man. What's going um, on, Tom? Shout out Tom? to you, and, and this was a great show. You know, uh, it's funny because I, I, I would be remiss not to say this. Um, you know, a lot of people, they, they hear me call in, and they don't understand that me and you talk every day. All the time. And basically, our projects are kind of tied together. Um, Jamar Collins uh, is, a, is a friend of mine on Facebook, and she reached out with Matrice, Matrice Richardson's father. Um, so then what I did is I figured my show is tomorrow we have a pack. Uh, event would be better to do this show. Mm -hmm. And so I pass that along. Shout out to Jamar Collins. And I say that to you as an audience to say, please do keep inboxing us. If you do have resources, I'm going to ask you to do yeah, something because, for me at the end of this, this yeah, little segment that I say. Yeah, uh, because Tony and I are a team and we do go back and forth. I send him stuff, he sends me stuff. That's just the way we do. So yeah, please keep inboxing. Well, go on, sorry. And, that, and as Alexander said, you did a phenomenal job of, of, of speaking to this father. But uh, again, shout out to Jamar Collins. Thank you so much mm. for making this happen. I think this is what the father deserved and the story deserved. And thank you as well. Um, you know, I come back to, to this thing and, and I come back a week later from doing my first video on the, on the Kamala Harris uh, presidential run, which received thank you to all you guys, almost like 75 or 80,000 views. What is interesting is I expected to get a lot more dislikes. And what I found is like it had like 4,000 likes and like 400 dislikes, which is extremely low. And I think there's a belief that Kamala is going to get a black vote that isn't showing up in, in on the Internet. I, I think that what's happening right now is that she might be in full spin because the visceral like reaction to her, her career, her background, her ethnicity, her white husband, um, because of the fact that, you know, framing it around Obama and what you have voted for, I think all of it together is making for her to be a very, very bad Democratic candidate. I've myself taken the position that, for me, I believe she might be the worst, one of the worst, let me say, black national Democratic candidates in a generation. Um, part of the reason I didn't want to cover Matrice is I didn't want to do it an injustice because I've been really touching on the, on the truancy thing. And I don't think we understand that it's, it's, it's awful. Not only that the truancy, when I say the truancy thing, Kamala introduces in 04, 05, her idea of how to get parents in, to send their kids to school. Now, I've been talking to school administrators and teachers. I'm hearing that part of it is they just want the money. So, like, when a kid is absent, you get money if they're there. So, like, the push isn't even about education. That's what I'm hearing. But the whole thing is, like, basically the in prison to imprison parents because the kid doesn't show and understand this is in the doesn't come to school and this is in the middle of wealth inequality in the middle of the pinnacle of wealth inequality because of uh silicon valley which is san francisco you have this woman who is uh who is uh not american dos pushing this and i believe i believe that part of the reason that she was even in her place is because she was occupying the American DOS spot in the whole lexicon of, of, of California politics. So you had Gavin Newsom, you had Feinstein, and so Willie Brown, I believe she was black in like our DOS. And that's kind of like how he saw her, and now she's coming out. Like, you don't have no DOS, Willie. You didn't, you didn't really position no American DOS to push back against the tide, and this woman is awful. And so I come back to it, and I don't know if the black vote is getting for her. And so... I look over at Marilyn Mosby, and I'm going to ask you to pull up that second image because I think we got to tie it up. Let's tie it up, Yvette. Let's pull up that second image I just sent to you. So we look at Marilyn Mosby, and I, I commend Marilyn Mosby for standing up to police officers and for what she did. But, uh-oh, Marilyn Mosby, that can. So, Alexander, point might even be more taken. Marilyn Mosby, that can. So is this going to be the play to try to make Marilyn Mosby's career, Kamala's career, because people are not able to actually tell the difference? That don't make no sense. Just being an AKA don't make you progressive, and it don't make you black. Now, I'm not saying I know enough about this organization to say what they stand for, but the, the fact that she has the career she has and is using
treating this organization, this black organization, the way she is, there's a reckoning that needs to happen. And I say the breaking brown people that are out there that are AKA, it ain't enough just to be quiet. Y'all need to go to y'all meetings and really say, why are we supporting her if this is her history with truancy? If this is her history on Matrice Richardson? If she, if she literally, when Marilyn Mosby, understand this, this is AKA to AKA, when Marilyn Mosby stood up against those officers, do we remember Kamala standing up for Marilyn Mosby? Hmm. Y'all can look it up. When Marilyn Mosby, an AKA, stood up against those officers and was about to lose her career, do we remember a national meeting with Kamala standing next to Marilyn Mosby where she stood up with this young woman? I don't. And I'm just saying, y'all as AKA has got to reconcile that. You know, I, I, I look at what the father said, and he had told us we got a chance to talk to this father offline, and uh, Latrice Richardson's father, and what she, he spoke to is an opportunist, and a careerist. And that's what Kamala has come off at. So when we look at Kamala and we look at the choreographing of, of her of her social she's been planning this for decades. This use of AKA and, and Howard to cloak herself and to cloak the big question. Is she black at all? And that's gonna be my question to y'all. You know, I, this new thing that's coming up is a couple of people have interviewed me. I don't know I mean have, have emailed me and I don't know enough about Jamaican history nor her. Because my problem is that I don't even understand why it matters that she's Jamaican. Because it doesn't make you African-American. And that's what we're really talking about. It's the weirdest thing ever that somehow being Jamaican or Trinidadian or something else makes you able to access our long lineage where here in this country because our bones are buried here. But okay, even beyond that, if we want to go to this black diaspora thing, I need to know if she's white Indian. Because if she's white Indian on one side and Indian on the other, the mother just married down cash. The mother didn't really marry like a black person. And, and Kamala isn't black. And then we have a whole nother crisis for at least the people who are having that issue as well. And I don't know enough. So I would like for you guys to get into our inboxes and tell us the backdrop of this. And those people that know, is she really like black? Does she, you know, did she come from black slaves or Indians and white? And I, you know, thank you so much if you can get that information. Last thing I'm going to say to you is, uh, you know, Sandy Darity has been at the core of pushing a whole shift in the way that we have uh, talked about wealth in America, race and wealth in America. Uh, I did a report with him, which you guys know. I've interviewed him multiple times. I'm going to have him on the show tomorrow to talk about Elizabeth Warren, Cory Booker, and, of course, Kamala Harris and compare their economic plans with my heavy bet on. You know, I don't think we all understand the power of these projects. I'm saying... I guess the break it brown and talk talk people really kind of do, but like no, we we changed the whole discussion around this. Everybody else is riding behind on the choo choo train, and I, I all hands on deck. You know, I appreciate all the YouTubers that are riding it that are helping and everything else. But at the end of the day, nobody's interviewing Darren, nobody's doing reports, nobody's interviewing Matrice Richardson, father. You know, nobody's really doing the digging that we're doing, and this is another level of academic discussion. Let's push the dialogue. But again, thank you, Yvette, for doing this one today. You know, I know Matrice Richardson is looking down and saying thank you as well. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate that. And I, you know, I, I, I want to go um, to something that, um, I, and I think this is something that has to be done that people don't understand. Like one of the things that Tony and I do, like we, like we talk all the time, and like if a story, like I'll tell him, like this is a, I think a black man is best for tell the story. I think this is your story. And he'll tell me, like, you, you're better at this. You, you, you articulate that better. That fire is better. I don't, this, this story needs the fire that you have. And I'll be like, this story needs that straight, matter-of-fact stuff that you got. Like, we do that. But, but understand that in order to do that, you kind of have to be selfless. You can't have to be like, no, this is mine. I, I, I think this is going to get attention. We don't do that. We don't do that at all. We just, we just, we just, we just is like, we, when we talk about this kind of stuff, it's just like, who is the best person for the story that we need to tell? That's the conversation that we have. And it's like, we're our own little newsroom. And we just decide like, no, this, this one is, this one is going to be you. This one is going to be you. That's what we do. But we're not, see, the difference is though, we're not rolling Martin. We're not trying to undercut each other. We're not, uh, well, well, it should be me because I was at Savoy. I was at the Galapagos Gazette in the summer of 92. Like, that's not, I, I don't know how else to put it, but that's not what we do. But you have to have people 
who are willing to do stuff and willing to have kind of relationships and professional relationships that are not built up on anybody's ego, right? And I don't think we really understand that. And I don't think we understand how detrimental it is to have people who are at the forefront who still kind of view all of this as like ego. You, This is not a space for ego no more. This is over with. Ego is over with. Who is the best person to tell whatever story that you have to tell? Because Tony and I are on the same accord in terms of our politics. So when we talk about a story, who's the best person? We all know the story. We talk about all these stories we do together. Okay, but who is the best spokesperson for this story? Do you think Roland could do that? Or is he going to be like, it's my story because I was at the Galapagos Gazette? That's not how we do it. That's not, you can't do it that way. So I'm going to, I'm going to take a couple more calls and, um, and, and then, um, you know, I want to get a couple more in before we end. I'm going to 510, 510, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? 510, hello, 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 Breaking Brown. Benita. What's going on? Oh, I know you Twitter. Twitter, I know you from Twitter. Yes. (laughs) Hello. So I, uh, this, the story tonight, um, the interview was the, you know, you, you always mention a lot about pivoting. It was such a monumental pivot um, that um, we went from, you know, talking about her, her lineage, who she is, which is very important. Mm-hmm. But this story is like the why that needs to come out. Mm-hmm. Um, I was at the rally on Sunday. And what was so interesting, shout out to Tone, was I didn't even know about it. I I, I woke up to his um, the notification on his, I think it was his Twitter or Facebook. And he said, if anybody's in the Bay Area, I need y'all to hit the ground and get to this <laughs> rally. And I just bought my Tone. Gas up the whip, <laughs> let's go. So I told my girlfriend, I said, oh, we going to Oakland, we got to go. And so when I got there, it was very interesting, you know, from the, even the picture that you showed. Um, it was uh, like four city blocks long, the line, and it's a small area where they wanted to fill it in, and the police had it all blocked off. And so we got there, it was the LGBT San Francisco white family, I mean, and that's what it was. I saw some, you know, some of the Oakland blacks and the aka but it was a very minimum amount of people as far as blacks mm. but i mean i was in the back 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 with i mean two older white ladies another couple a family and and they were just out there and the L, and i actually heard a guy talking in line because my friend and i were walking up to the front of the line and he said something to us he says well you know the back of the line is i said no we're not looking for the back we're going to the front you know, and I told him something like the first should be last and the last should be first. <laughs> but I heard him telling another person in line saying, well, you know, I don't care about her father. I just love her. I just think she's the bomb. And, and I mean, and he was just as gay and sweet as he could be. <laughs> just, oh, we just love her so much. She is just so perfect. And, and I'm thinking to myself, this this woman, this, this could really happen. Because I'm looking at the people and there's that moment, because I heard you say it tonight when I thought, okay, now I'm getting a little scared. You know, I'm out here with all these white folks and the AKAs, I mean, I saw some black people. I saw like, a, like you know, we, we, we were gathered, but they weren't making as much noise as the other people were. Mm. And there was a couple of things. I don't know how much you could tell, you could see from the live screen, but she had a black playlist. She had, um, she had a black minister out there. I think oh. her name was Demetrius something. Did they show that on TV? I didn't see it, but I, I, I didn't see it. But I'm, I, 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 okay. I might have missed they, they that. They were coming. showing him on the screen. She came out there. They had some. She had another choir sing the anthem. I mean, this preacher preached some like Martin Luther King. We going to the oh. mountain. And I'm saying to myself, this woman, so what's happening is she's cloaking herself in DOSness for the white people. And then when we we corner her on it, she just kind of goes to the AKA side. And so what I saw was a lot of that identity politics, and they were just eating it up. And I and I sat stood on a, in a on a bench in the back, and I thought this this woman is really we're going to have to strategize. And so I got on Twitter and I did a, a video. I'm not that good on it, and I think uh, and I was te- you know trying to show the people that I was out there, and this is what was going on. 
But I want to just speak to a couple of points that I, we had wrote that I had wrote down. Okay. Um, one is that if we're not careful and if we don't know how to pivot in this thing, she will use that to her, to her advantage. Yeah, of course. I mean, this this woman is really calculating, and we're and and, and although we know, I think it's important. And what you did tonight was so um, important in that pivot. Is this is a message that we're going to have to show to get those people? Because I think she was playing into that Trump base. She really was. She, there was a couple of times in the speech where she said um, there was some mild malware in the White House. And she did a little pause, and the crowd just went crazy. So she was kind of, you know, challenging Trump. And every time she just made a little, threw a little shade, they loved it. They ate it. They ate it up. Yeah, I saw that. But, but I saw that. And I saw the turn of the neck. I saw the neck roll. They love that. But understand that I'm not. No. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying, but but like gay guys, especially white gay guys, love the little neck roll. Like oh, and it's just like when she did that, she knew that she wasn't just playing to black women. She was playing to the. She was playing to to, to like to like the the, the, the gay her, male crowd her, too. Her yeah, the look to be. Oh, she fierce girl. You know it's gonna, what they're gonna go back when they drink a mimosa. What they gonna say? So like, I don't think people understand. Like we stay so encased in ourselves that we don't understand. Like that neck roll just wasn't for us, baby. Like that's not what that was. She understands her San Francisco. Like, that's not just Oakland. Like, she understands who she brings to the table. And she understands what they exactly. like. And we don't get that. We just be like, no, that was for us. No, no, it wasn't. So, so what, what happened in the course of that, so there was a lady that came up, came by from BuzzFeed, a little young Caucasian girl, and she wasn't even going to interview me. And I knew it. Because she was actually kind of looking for somebody that supported Kamala. And she had some really good questions. She was asking, you know, people why they were there and what did they think of the candidate. And was there anything that the candidate said or that, what did she say? Was there anything that you wanted to hear from the candidate that you, that you hadn't heard that would make you vote for her? So I listened to her interview the lady next to me, and so she was about to walk away, and my friend said, oh, why don't you ask her? She has a lot to say. I was like, please come over here. I have my notes <laughs> from home the day before, and I have my questions. And so, I, and so she, uh, she said, well, <laughs> what's your name? And she started asking me questions. And so I said, well, you know, uh, I don't think she has said enough. I said, I'm waiting to hear something, and I haven't heard it yet. I said I represent um, Breaking Brown. Uh, we are American DOS. I said, and we just want to hear what her platform is, and I haven't heard it. And she kind of took down the questions, I mean, my answers, and, and uh, she's, I said, well, I'm going to look for that story, Molly. <laughs> and, she, and when I read it, it had nothing about what I said. Yeah, Molly, Molly so didn't want to that story. One of the other things that we need to go over is it was BuzzFeed, which I didn't realize that they were a uh, maybe a leftist or whatever type of media they are. We don't have the media. And so that's why what you did tonight was so, I think, I, like I said before, it was a pivotal part. And I think that we have just kind of, um, we have moved into another space because this is what we need. And so I know we're always talking about um, solutions. And so one of the things that got me, I was so angry, like the next day when I didn't see what I said in the article, I said, I need to be asking the questions. And I think for Breaking Brown, we need to be in that space where we're asking the questions. And so what the idea that I came up with was to have a Breaking Brown press corps. Mm, where that's, that's we have enough videos and information on YouTube between you and Tom yeah. that, that we can look at those and figure out what the questions are that we need to ask. Yeah. And and and, 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 and have one of have us in those rooms. Because I'm telling you, this woman ain't playing. Yeah, she she's aggressive. She's a she's a, she's a she's an aggressive careerist. She has planned that she's gonna be president. And she don't care who she what she got to do, how she got to get there. She's gonna do it. She's a, yeah. She's 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 playing a very aggressive game. And when I saw that base and how she was playing into it, I mean, she was going into, she, you know, before, right before she came to speak, they had the mayor of a. Uh, of Oakland, uh, Libby Schaefer introduced her and she was saying how they went back 23 years from high school and blah, blah, blah. And then she went off stage. And then the next song that we heard was uh, This Girl's on Fire. Mm. And, you know, they, they just love that. Yeah. 
Yeah, they love it. They eat it up. They eat it up. They eat it up. Like anything that's sort of, even if it's not us, but if it's quote unquote black culture, they just eat it up. They just, exactly. it's just, it don't even matter if you're not a part of it. They don't care. Yeah, they, She's fierce, girl. She's fierce. Didn't you see her? She's fierce. There was a couple of protesters out. There was a couple. There was one girl, and it was so funny because they were, it was almost like she couldn't say anything, but she had a sign, and it had, um, I think I saw Trayvon, and it had something about Kamala, and she was just kind of walking around. And um, another group that I saw there, they had a sign, and, and what struck me, they said 12 years until something. And I said, well, what is that? And they said, well, we've been asking her to go, um, to endorse our uh, green, I think it was a campaign, and she's been kind of, you know, going back and forth with us, but she won't give us a definite answer. Mm. And so we were, they were calling her the horoscope candidate. I said, well, can you explain what that means? Well, yeah, she's a candidate where you just pick a sign. <laughs> You just pick out something that sounds good, and, and that's it. She, she, you know, she, she, she endorses everything. Everything is okay with her. And but that, said, isn't that, that, isn't that what the rally felt like? So I kind of, and then I interviewed another white guy on her staff, and that was the one. I said, oh, well, do you think she's cute? Like, why would you vote for her? He was like, oh, no, honey, I'm gay. First of all, that has nothing to do with who you would vote for. And, I didn't, and that I didn't wasn't say anything you order. What's wrong and with him? He's yeah, and so he says, well, no, I worked on her campaign for two years, and, you know, she's nice, and, you know, she's down. I said, well, how much interaction have you had with her working on her campaign? I said, is she acceptable to you? How much time have you actually spent with her? And he says, well, I've, I've stopped, sat down with her, like, maybe twice in the two years that he volunteered on her campaign. And so these are the people that we're going to need to reach Breaking Brown. It's these folks. Okay. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think you're right. And I think you're very right about one thing. When I looked at her speech and I played it back a couple times, it seems like she just threw everything in. Like she's like, I'm just going to be everything to all people. Like I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Medicare for all. We ain't going to pay for it. We just going to pay for it with the tax cut. That's not enough money, Kamala. Like, don't you do math? Like, that's not enough. Like, I'm just, I'm for that too. I'm for, I'm for everything. I'm for everything. I got all the, I got all the bases covered. And we don't like know enough to really do a serious analysis and say like, this don't make no sense. Like what you just said don't make no sense. So. I felt like I was at a Trump rally that these were people that could have potentially voted for Trump. And now that they were tired of him, this would be their next pick. Mm. It's somebody that they could maybe shape or mold or get to endorse their policy. You know, because they got the money. They, yeah, they all got the money. We don't And got if it. they throw enough at her with her Jewish husband who has money, mm -hmm. they can get what they want on the bills and in legislation. Yeah, you're right, fam. You're right. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to try to get one more call in. But you're exactly right, fam. I appreciate you going out there. Talk, right, talk. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you, fam. I appreciate it. Yeah, this is, this, this is, I mean, that's a very interesting assessment from somebody who was actually on the ground and saw all this stuff go down. Like, in terms of the vibe, because what they'll give you is all these people shouting, rah, 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 yeah, Medicare, and show the black people, the black preacher, or whatever, and show, and they can, they can really case this to make it look like what it is, what, what it's not, when, when, because they're filming it to you on TV, they can edit it and put whatever shots they want into it. So, it's, it's, it's a very interesting thing to hear from somebody who actually was there who can say, like, no, that's not what I saw. I saw something very, very, very different um, in terms of who was there and why they were representing her. So I'm going to take another call, fam. Let's try to keep it really, really quick. Um, so maybe I can get two in, but let's try to get to the point and, and get in and get out. 704, I'm coming to you. 704, what's your name? Where you calling from? Good after, I mean, good evening, event. My name is Tamara Thorne. Hey. And I want to bring up something. I'm so nervous just calling and getting in. No, I give you my full name. Nervous. But it's anyway, I want to say that the AKAs are being dragged down with her. That is a smoke and mirror routine. People do not have any idea if she was active after college at all. Has she had any kind of involvement with them? Has she ever shown any kind of participation or involvement with them? Just the same way her white husband disappeared is the same way AKA and Howard reappeared. I had never heard that she was AKA until it was time for her to get on this bandwagon. And I really think people need to understand that there is a difference she may have done it like the white sororities do. She was in it while she was in college, and, and that was it. Rachel, those all went to Howard. We all know 
Rachel Dolezal, um, pretty much calling herself transracial and impersonated a black person. Rachel Dolezal very well could have pledged, a.k.a. there as well. Black Greek little organizations are predominantly black, but not exclusively black. It has no bearing on it. She's using power and AKA to try to show some blackness, but neither of the two even really truly prove that she has any association with ADOS other than her going to that school at all. And I appreciate you Thank and you. what you do. You have given me a political education. Before your show, I would have voted for her just because they said she was black. Now I know better. So I do appreciate that. And I also want to mention this name, Pearl Burr Floyd. She's in Gastonia, North Carolina. She is a Republican. She's a black woman and an AKA. She has totally disassociated herself from any kind of blackness. You would not know that she had any kind of involvement with blacks in terms of AKA unless you looked it up and did some serious searching. I was shocked to see that she had any kind of involvement with any black organization. So I think Kamala Harris has done the same thing. They get in these groups, they join it for either a legacy or while their friend was online, and then when they're done, they're done. They get rid of any kind of mention of blackness until they are garnering the black vote. I am not falling for it, and I hope no other person does as well, but the AKA is somebody better speak up because they're getting dragged down with this, that whole Port Valley prostitution ring thing, and then her and this um, issue with Willie Brown. They need to say something that this is themselves quick because I'm reading the chat and it just looks like it's a bunch of prostitutes that belong to that organization. Now, I, I, I'm not going to say they're like that, but they need to distance themselves from her before they are drugged down with her. And I also want to mention that Hillary Clinton was offered honorary membership at the Alpha Kappa Alpha. So what does that tell you about that organization? Oh my Lord, was she? Oh my Lord, was she? Oh. Okay, I didn't know that. But... Yes, she was. Yes, she was. Um, uh, Hillary Clinton was offered, and so was Michelle Obama. I don't know if Michelle Obama was actually initiated, but Hillary Clinton turned them down because she said that she could not join something that would prohibit her from being a member of one particular organization, like she couldn't become a member of any other organization. But not too long after that, Bill Clinton accepted his honorary membership into Phi Beta Sigma. So what does that tell you? <laughs> she didn't want, she didn't want no pink and green. <laughs> I said she didn't want no pink and green. Hillary didn't want no pink and green, girl. No, no. So that, t- but see, I want people to look at that. Look at that. We we got to do better, and I appreciate you telling us these things because they would have chosen a woman who not only. Uh, the whole mandatory sentencing, but the super predators, and then the follow up with Kamala Harris. That's a bad look for the AKA. Mm. And I'm going to let you go. Ooh, you all you, have man. a wonderful night. I appreciate you and everything you do. I, pre- I appreciate this call, fam. That was on point right there. I appreciate this call. Let me just say something. Let me just say something that she just said. I'm about to end this this tonight, fam. I, I, I apologize. We're two, we're, we're two and a half hours. What she just said was very important. She said that just like her husband disappeared. Remember, remember Alexander said the husband wasn't at the pink, the, 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 what was the AKA had? The pink ice or whatever they had, the gala, South Carolina. Just like your husband disappeared, your e- AKA affiliation reappeared. Good God almighty. Oh my God. Listen, I think, I think fam, listen, I think we on to the game. I think we on to the game. I think we understand what's happening. I think we understand how we've been played. We are on to the con. We just gotta we just gotta grow our group. We are on to the con. And I wanna thank everybody who showed up. I know this isn't our regular night. Um I, but I wanna thank everybody who showed up and showed out um for this evening. If I didn't get to your call, I apologize. Remember, family, um, there will be no Wednesday show because Wednesday I will be um, I will be in Louisville, uh, for, uh, the West Louisville Forum. Please remember that. Um, also keep in mind, fam, on the 21st of March, that's a Thursday, uh, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will be doing the book club, American Slavery, American Freedom, Edmund S. Morgan. Please, fam, if you are here and you are in, um, the chat right now, please hit that like button. If you haven't hit that like button, it's 1700 in the chat. Please hit that. Cost you no money. Uh, but you can also go to donatebrown.com. You can go to Patreon, 
patreon.com slash ycarnell to donate. Please hit that bell. If you have not hit that bell so that you get notifications, please hit that bell and please check that bell. Also, if you have subscribed to the newsletter, please add editor at breakingbrown.com to your contacts because if you don't open a newsletter, sometimes it suppresses. So you don't, so you'd be like, why am I not getting a newsletter no more? Well, it suppressed you because, you know, it suppressed you because you didn't open or whatever and you didn't know because it went to your junk file. So please add editor at breakingbrown.com. Um, and you, if you want to get a newsletter, newsletter is $2 a month. Um, and I send it out every Sunday with news I think is important to the American DOS community. So that is what we are, fam. Um, I appreciate y'all for going hard for, with me because I know that this week uh, we had more shows than normal. And to me, that's fine because we're going to be missing a show, like I said. Uh, we're going to be missing a show next week um, because I'll be in the, the West Louisville Forum. So Wednesday, no show. Monday, we will have a show as usual. Wednesday though, no show. So don't forget, and the people in the Breaking Brown family forget, make sure you tell them she told us it wasn't gonna be no show on Wednesday. Leroy, she said it wasn't gonna be no show. No, sit down. So please make sure everybody understands that fam. Um, if anybody feels any if anybody gets lost, because I know people miss shows and don't nobody know. So Tone and I will be will be in Louisville on uh February the 6th. So that's it, fam, for the show. Please hit the like button on your way out. Please share. Um, and do all of that good stuff. I appreciate it. But until next time, fam. <laughs>